right, welcome back to We Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green. Oh my God, I don't know what's happening in the chat. I feel like everybody's lost their mind. I feel like a, a, a school uh, school teacher. Uh, I feel so much older than everyone in the chat. Uh, but that must mean that Wednesday 13 is going to be here because when Wednesday is here, all hell uh, breaks loose. And uh, and I'm going to give you an example of that before uh, Wednesday gets here. Now, Wednesday and I were having a very important business meeting, and uh, we were able to see some of your chat. I was. Wednesday uh, was not. But, uh, okay, there's a million things here. The first person here was M. And she says, I believe it's a she. Hi, Jason. Hi, Wednesday. And I, I appreciate uh, you being here. First, good old Drizzler. Drizzler is uh, second. Good to see Drizzler's back, even though I said I was going to bang his mom. Uh, Wednesday's cat is here. Uh, Wednesday's cat is there as well. But it's good to see you. Uh, uh, Clint is watching from the stormy northeast. And this is where it starts to get interesting. Uh, uh, well, let's wait for Wednesday to talk about this. Uh, he, he can maybe shed some light on the language that the kids uh, speak. We're going to uh, uh, have a, a good old time. And Wednesday 13 will be here right after this. All right, welcome everybody uh, for being here. It's Wednesday, as you know, and uh, what would Wednesday be without Wednesday 13? Hey, Wednesday. Hello, hello, hello. I'm glad uh, that you're able to be here and we were talking about all kinds of exciting uh, plans for the future and yes. a lot going on, a lot going on in my world and Wednesday's world and all yeah. those worlds. Speaking uh, of Wednesday's world, I'll let you see Wednesday's world today. Some people don't know about that. You got to see a little bit of the of a uh, couple of years ago, some stuff I forgot about I had filmed. Now, we don't want to use the C word. I've learned that. Uh, yes. But we can say lockdown, uh, that oh, kind of oh, thing. Oh, oh, that's right. C that word. C word. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, you can say the other C word. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, when, what, what word? Okay. When that lockdown began, everyone had to find something to do. I started mm -hmm. doing this show essentially on Facebook for free, just something to kind of do. And then it took off to, to the uh, millions and millions of viewers who are here now. But Wednesday had this really cool thing called Wednesday's World, and it was available for his Patreons. And he has, I saw about 10 episodes. I only saw the first one. Um, but I think that uh, Wednesday has some plans to get into the YouTube, get it a little bit organized so that there's some interactive content for everyone to see. It's really funny stuff. It's like if Elvira and uh, Zachary Lee, I don't think anyone knows who that is, but uh, and Criswell and Pee Wee Playhouse all were in one show. And and it, I could tell it took work. You, you definitely had some help uh, with some editing and things, uh, but it's funny and it's it's a little crazy. Yeah, I didn't, uh, you know, not to talk about it forever because someone knows what the hell we're talking about. Uh, yeah, my, my guy Vicente that did my music videos uh, helped me do that. So that's why it looked as good as it did. I was just I just provided the entertainment for it. But uh, I basically played every character. I dressed up. I did skits. I did movie clips. Um, and as it went on, it got better. If you watch the first episode, that's the worst one. I think I was interviewing Joe Exotic on that one. Uh, that's he right. Was, he was hot in the news then, and I could I could do his voice real good, so I imitated him. Um, so yeah, as the episodes go on there, it gets better and goofier and there's some, uh, probably some things I probably couldn't get away with now that, uh, or probably Definitely. shouldn't have got away with then, but, uh, Definitely. I, I, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's fun and, and, and it's, uh, definitely inspired by Pee Wee's Playhouse and that wonder shows and TV show I was obsessed with. Yeah, no, you, you can, uh, you can see it's funny. I never watched that Joe Exotic show. I think I'm the one, but, no. uh. This woman called me about taking part in a documentary, and I don't think I'm even supposed to talk about it. It hasn't come out yet. But it was this, it's a series that was supposed to be on Netflix, and she is the creator of that show, or uh, it's her show. And really? I didn't know anything about it, but I knew she was a big deal because that show was so popular. And I yeah. everyone wanted to talk to her about it, and I kept saying, I never really saw that Lion King thing you did. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. it. 
I have some action figures someone got me of them back here uh, on the someone made that reaction figures of the of the Tiger King. Um and I guess the reason I was so fascinated with it is because he's a redneck and when I watched it there's about 30 Joe exotics in the town I grew up in almost. <laughs> Maybe yeah, they weren't villain and tigers but that that kind of guy was around every corner pretty much. And I was I was just fascinated with it. So uh it's still it's still amazing to me that, that that was a real thing. So that was probably the best part of COVID. Yeah. You just used the C word Wednesday. What happened? I gotta Sorry. get a Sorry. I gotta get a bleep I gotta get a bleep button. For, all right. for, 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 it's all right. All right. I appeal these things. What happens is for those of you who want a lesson in YouTube, uh, the algorithm listens and there's certain words that it hears and will flag your video and then turn off ads. They say maybe this isn't suitable for advertising. Now, what could yeah, be more suitable than for advertising than you and I? But, yeah. um, <laughs> but, uh, but, and then I have to appeal it and I always win. Everything is here is fine. But so I, I was saying uh, that you're, you're, you're the Wednesday's world and you maybe you'll see some of it soon on YouTube was a little yeah. bit funny and crazy. And then I thought, well, so is the audience today. Uh, yeah. I can't read this name. Uh, uh, yes. You know this person? No, I don't. But I'm sorry, I can't read it either. It, it, it looks like it says, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe write um, it in damn. English. And, but they uh, want to cut my hair and have embryo. Uh, I got to put my glasses on. Uh, I want to cut Jason Green's hair to little embryos hairstyle tonight. Is a little embryo like a rapper or something? That's what I was going to say. Little embryos. Probably a rapper. I hope so. Here if it's is, not, it should be. These are all friends of Wednesday, I can tell. Here is Necrophase. And Necro this, yeah, and this is Kendall Lynn. And mm. uh, she's been watching regularly. Some of the fans are watching on a regular basis, which is nice. This uh, same person whose name we can't say, Anise, uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, can, we can we touch each other to Jason Green's live tonight? I I'm hoping this is a person of age and I'm not sure who she's talking to. This one I'm just gonna put out there. I don't even know if I'll read it, but she would like to pull my long hair. Uh, 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 I don't know if you can say this. Do can, can you say doggy style ones? <laughs> I think so. That's how I order my eggs at IHOP every time. <laughs> they always ask me, how do you like your eggs? And I go, oh, doggy style. <laughs> they must always. be correct. Yeah. And a lot of people know each other in here. I see it, which is great. It's nice to see people mm -hmm. entertaining themselves. Uh, I don't know. Joey's forehead has been here quite a bit. And uh, I, did Joey Jordison have a, a big forehead? I mean, I don't really know. I think people used to talk about Joey's forehead. And it probably didn't help that he shaved his eyebrows either. And the same thing for me. People people talk about my forehead, too. Uh this is why I wear these hats sometimes. And You have more space to work with. Was Joey yeah. Jordison five foot three? Is that true? He was very short, yes. Yeah, and I sometimes you can see there's photos of us. Sometimes I'll come across photos and be like, they just make me laugh because every time Joey would take a picture, you know, he would stand kind of the way I do. My legs are kind of parted, but when he would when he would part his legs, he would get even shorter. And I had to get shorter with him. So sometimes he'd really kind of like get in that rock pose. And there's one photo of us. I look like Jean Claude Van Damme. I have my That's legs. That's what I was are, gonna say. Yeah, we, we they're like. like <laughs> yeah, it's pretty I was good. Like say, doing, it's like blood sport. It's amazing. I was, it was funny. It's funny the pop culture, the way we both think. As, as soon as you said it, I go, "You must have been <laughs> a Jean Claude Van Damme split before uh, um, before the photo." Did I tell you the story about how I went to school with Jean Claude Van Damme's sister-in-law? No. No, that's amazing. I've been watching a lot of Van Damme movies on uh, Pluto the past past week. I've seen uh, several. I'm getting ready to go back into time and re relive those as well. I enjoyed them. They're bad, but they're supposed they're, to be bad. Yeah, yeah. Lionheart was on the other day. Bloodsport was on this morning, which is great because you got Ogre in that. You can't go wrong mm -hmm. with that. Uh, and Lolo. And, and the uh, dragons in that. Uh, Death Warrant was, was another good one. Uh, and what's the one where he's a twin? Hard target. Well, double impact. Double impact. That one was on the other day. I was I was kind of confused. I don't know that one as well, but uh I don't I know that one as well either. Hard target was a John Woo movie. That one's pretty good. It's sort of a play on running man or world's most dangerous game where they hunt people. 
Yes. Uh, that's the one where he catches the snake and he's got the mullet, right? Where he yeah, catches... he's got the mullet. Yeah. Yep. And the snake yeah. for sure. That's a good uh, one. I, I like that one. Um, some of the later ones he made, he has these kind of straight to Netflix movies and they're not that bad. They kind you of know, follow the format of... of Cyborg is, is, a, is another good one too. Another weird movie. You go back and watch it. It's pretty, it's pretty bizarre and, and cool. Yeah, when I was in high school, Van Damme was just sort of becoming a thing. No mm -hmm. Retreat, No Surrender, I think, is his first movie. And yes. there was this girl in my class, and I thought she was kind of cute, and I was sort of trying to flirt. She was wearing the Guns N' Roses robot jacket. I can't use the R word that it's called, but you know it's yes. a band mm -hmm. artwork. And I remember thinking, she had a Led Zeppelin back patch, and I thought, well, I, I'm going to end up with this girl. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't happen. But um, but we, we were friends at the time, and she told me, and this is tricky, but I grew up on a street in New York City called Seaman Avenue. That's the truth. And right. she lived down the road from, down the block from me on Seaman Avenue, but she lived at the cross street of Seaman and Cumming. Now, I, I know I'm going to have to appeal this, but it's real. The Basketball Diaries, the book, uh, Jim Carroll lived on those streets. He knew it as well. I've had friends come over and ask me, you got to show me the cross streets, you know, because the, 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 the signs interact. Anyway, I was like so fascinated, but she made it like it was no big deal that Van Dam was her brother-in-law. And I was like, I, he's hanging out here in Washington Heights. I got to, I got to meet this guy. And, um, uh, and at that point I had never met him, but I, I always, I met him years later, but her right. sister was Gladys Portuguese, who was a very famous bodybuilder. And she married Van Damme, and then they were divorced. They are presently married again. And uh, so me and Van Damme's sister-in-law appeared on a magazine cover called Scholastic Magazine that went to all the schools. I remember and Scholastic, yes, yes. Remember that? Yeah. And I hadn't yes. seen her in 35 years. I don't know, something like that. And uh, she came to one of Stephen's shows in New York, and mm -hmm. we try to recreate the photo. And i got to share this. I haven't shared it yet. And it's funny. I think you could agree with this. One of the great things about touring is that you reconnect with people that you would never have a chance to see otherwise. And you have your own, you have a tour family. There's people you go, oh, I'm going to Utah. Yeah, you know, I better call Donny Osmond. Or, or, yeah, or yeah. That's the best part about touring is because you get to kind of go around and you've got your certain areas. You go, oh, Ohio or Massachusetts. This is my place and that's my friends. And like, uh, yeah, it's always fun. You have your, you have your tour family. Yeah. And I could tell you the way that my guys tour, everybody's either in a relationship or married or whatever. And so it's not like, oh, we're going to Texas. That's where that one girl, uh, you know, who took 63 guys is. It's more like, oh, that that's the place with that good restaurant. You know, oh, um, we do all of it. We say always oh, bring all the girls, all the restaurants. We just we just bring it all. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah, matter. Well, you, Relationships or not, we don't care. Let's burn it down. Burn it down. That's going to be uh, yes. Blabbermouth's headline, yeah. uh, right there. Uh, um, okay, so let's t so let's try to take a look. <laughs> Kendall Lynn is saying that I should just ignore everyone because they're weird. Kendall Lynn is the voice of reason today. And okay, so I'm going to try to scroll through some of this. Um, Joe, uh, Joey's forehead says he loves me, uh, uh, even though I muted him. I didn't, didn't mute anybody. I haven't done anything. Uh, uh, when there's too much spamming there's mods who watch this chat michelle sometimes is one and my friend jay but i don't uh, uh do it but uh normally people would block somebody like this or say that mm -hmm. they, but here they would like kendallin to shut the flip flapping flapping flop yeah Fluck. all right uh or th or us three are gonna touch you I, I don't you know what i can read this person's name now i think it says ambria a M B R I A. It's like it's uh, some kind of like black metal font, but it's not. <laughs> gotcha. So, All right, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying how ridiculous everybody is right now, but at some point we we probably have to calm everybody down. Someone uh, asked a question here. Do I always perform in full prosthetic makeup? Isn't prosthetic makeup when you add like noses and chin? I don't think I've ever did that. Did you do that? Ghost to... does it. I used to wear a mask of my face years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I did that a couple of times, but I haven't did that in a while. But I don't wear any any prosthetics yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Waiting, pulling, waiting off for that for a little bit, maybe a year or two. 
Yeah. Um, well, a ghost does it. When Ghost first came out, the great thing about Ghost was not everyone knew the gimmick. It, it was mm -hmm. kind of like wrestling. You know what I mean? You didn't know what was real and who was who. And sometimes it looked like it was just makeup. But um, the best was when he did the Papa, who was the old man. And so yeah. he would take off the, the one mask and then have another mask. And sometimes yeah, yeah. the old Papa would go do appearances. Well, it, I loved it. I'm a Ghost fan. Ghost is really good and it's very smart and it's very thought out. It's it's made like it's not just made up on the spot. They have a whole storyline that takes them into the next one and uh beyond their music, it's just it's it's funny. Like it's it's crazy how they've created this this world and uh yeah, I'm into it. I I I I saw them play on their first tour coming here at the Roxy. It's crazy to see them go from that club mm -hmm. to the arena show that I saw them just uh, not even a year ago. I dated a girl who really liked Ghost, and uh, I, like a lot of people, thought it was something very heavy. You know, I thought this mm -hmm. was going to be like King Diamond. And she was playing it in the other room, and I go, what are you listening to? And she goes, uh, oh, that's Ghost. I go, I thought that was Barry Manilow. I go, that's Ghost? I go, it's yeah. like very melodic and catchy and has hooks. And I go, and I really started to fall in love with it. And then I'm like, I got to research this. And the, then I spent, out, this is before he was outed. And yeah. I'm sort of like, it's got to be this guy. And then I looked at, uh, I looked at Tobias, and I go, you know, this is a good-looking guy, and mm -hmm. he likes to make himself look ugly. And I go, this is a guy who's confident in his uh, marriage, you, you know, uh, because yeah. he, 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 really, you couldn't tell what he looks like. And uh, maybe the same could probably be said about you. I mean, when yeah. you're on stage, you're not the guy that we see now, which I, I like. I like that you don't uh, do your interviews as the guy on stage. It would, yeah. It, it would be, it would ruin the mystique. Yeah. That's no fun to do that. I, I had a lot of, when I first started doing the label and stuff, they would ask me stuff like that and be like, Hey, so you're going to do the interviews like in your full makeup. I'm like, no, I don't do that. And they're like, why? I'm like, cause look, I was like, it's dumb enough. I don't need to be talking the way I, cause I just, I can't, I can't go into a character and I mean, I, I, of course I've done, I film things where I'm sort of in a character and say certain things, but I just to do an interview the way we're doing it would just be too steel Panther and goofy. Yes, I agree. And I, I, I talked to Eddie trunk once and now I'm name dropping Eddie trunk. And I, mm -hmm. but I said to him, I go, would you interview steel Panther? And he said, not in the characters. And that's what I said as well. Cause we are both talking right. to Ralph the singer. And I said, I can't do it. The Great Cat or something ridiculous like that, or Stanley, I'm into. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm not into, uh, I've had guests on the show that, are as, that reminded me of Steel Panther. I don't need it, someone uh, uh, pretending. I'm going to clean this chat up in just a minute. So if there's anyone here who's offended right. or annoyed, I will, I will straighten this uh, out. Um, <laughs> I, it's like a, a now I'm suddenly I'm a, a student teacher uh, or something. Uh, Wait, Wednesday, one of the things, you know, when we first met, you said, do you like ghosts? And I go, this is a tough question because there's people who either really like it or people who really hate it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and it's just one of many things that we have in common. OK, it looks like there's people sort of fighting amongst each other. It, it doesn't even seem so funny. And I want to make sure that people. Uh, yeah, Tara says we need Michelle in the chat. I agree. Um, needs to clean this up, but I'm going to work on it. And uh, uh, Lorraine feels like she's the oldest, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start cleaning this up uh, because people want. There's a lot of nice people. Melanie is a channel member, and there's a lot of people who just want to watch. Uh, George has been with us for a long time as well. Who just want to watch and ask questions and don't want to. Uh, um, yeah, uh, someone asking if Drizzler's mom is available. I wish because maybe she could put him to bed. Although it, uh, Drizzler's not being the problem. It's it's a little bit of everyone else. Um, yes, things have gotten out of hand today, but for those of you who are here, uh, <laughs> and I am going to start uh, banning people, so everyone just behave. I, I don't want to be the grown up in this. You know, when I started doing YouTube, I did not plan on being the mature one, and uh, <laughs> and I don't think Wednesday what Wednesday surrounded in a room of GI Joe figures. He certainly doesn't want to be. He yeah. doesn't want to be. He is a parent. He doesn't need to be your parent too. Um, oh, okay. you know what? I, I I forgot to tell you about this. I was going to message you over the weekend. I watched the new Roadhouse 
Oh, now this is interesting. Wow. Bad? What a, what a horrible, horrible movie this was. Um, it makes Roadhouse 2 look like the greatest movie ever made, mm -hmm. if you remember that. Uh, Barely. It's so bad. It is. I felt like I was watching like a R-rated version of Walker, Texas Ranger. That's about how good it was. And, and that's so the on Chuck Norris. It was it was bad. It was really not funny bad. It was just bad. Bad. Connor McGregor was 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 even was even worse in it. I'm not saying I think I don't want to come beat me up because he most yeah. certainly could. Uh he was terrible in it, and no one even put any restriction on him to like, hey, maybe tone it down a bit. Nope. It's it, Patrick Swayze's rolling over in his in his grave. We we're speaking of ghosts, so I had to, I thought of Patrick Swayze when you said ghost, and that's why Naturally. I'm here. Yeah, yeah uh, no, uh, um, for sure. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I I think I may uh, I may sit it out. Uh, it's um, it's it's horrible. I was telling my friend, I was like, it's like, is it really that bad? I'm like, it makes the first Roadhouse like every actor should get an Oscar compared to how horrible this new one is it's even the fight scenes weren't even fun even the, the fight scenes in the original roadhouse are amazing when when dalton first cracks that guy's head and breaks oh, that table great. in half it's amazing and and there's not even one shot in this new one this even comes close to that but i'm crazy jeff, for swayze so what can i say yeah no you are crazy for swayze jeff healy one of my favorite guitar players not just because he was blind he was a better guitar player than most people who had sight and he was one of the few people who had an original style to his playing. Yeah. When I was a kid, my friends wanted to go see Bon Jovi play in New Jersey. But mm -hmm. Jeff Healy was opening. And I was like, well, wow. I'll go to see Jeff Healy and maybe I'll stick around for Bon Jovi in New Jersey. But, uh, uh, but I'd seen him many times. And I have a record that he signed for me. The man, no had, never, the man had never seen before. His eyes were not actual. Yeah. He lost his vision to cancer at, at you know, birth. And so, but he, he could hold, I, I heard that he could sign records and he said, just give me the record. And he sort of towards his lap and his signature was better than most signatures that sighted people would have. And I met him another time. He was on stage playing at the house of blues and he has a braille watch or some what? sort of watch so that he could tell the time. And he had, so he would know when the set was over by checking his watch. And, wow. um, so afterwards, he goes, I'm going to come down there and hang out with everybody. And I, I said, I got to take a picture with Jeff Healy. And uh, I took the picture with him, but he was sort of facing a different direction. And I go, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ask him again and use a different voice. And <laughs> true story. And I went over to, you know, I, I went like, a, hello there, Jeff. Heard it all. <laughs> it, it's a terrible voice. And then that picture, he's looking towards the camera. I should share this. Unfortunately, he passed away, but uh, he yeah. is in Roadhouse. He has one of the great lines where he tells Patrick Swayze, I thought you would be taller. Um, he, he also says another great line. He says, what's the deal with him? And he says, does he say fuck with him and he'll seal your fate? I believe he says yes, something right. like that too. Yeah. Uh, there's also a documentary on him that's coming out soon, I heard, which sounds pretty Oh, cool. I look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, but, uh, uh, but for the young young people watching, if you never saw the original Roadhouse, check it out, uh, and also check out Jeff Healy. Okay, uh, uh, but speaking of fighting, are you, mm -hmm. you going to watch uh, Mr. Beast fight Mike Ty Mike Tyson? Or oh, I have to. I mean, man, Mike Tyson. Uh, that's why I have a Nintendo right here because of Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Yep. I don't know many things. Like I, I, I barely know my social security number. Uh, I don't know like my license number, but I know the password to get to Mike Tyson on Nintendo. Memorize 007-373-5963 takes you straight to Mike Tyson. That's uh, incredible. I, mean, I, yeah. I never, I don't think I ever made it, and now I'm gonna have to buy a system. In yeah. Case you know the, uh, uh, answer. He has the best fights. I was just recently watching like a compilation of Tyson's like first 10 fights. It's only like 20 minutes because he knocks everybody out in the first uh, minute. It's amazing watching him. And it was pretty cool watching it in real time as growing up because he was he's our Muhammad Ali 
you know, no one could ever replace that guy. I mean, and and then to know that he bit the dude's ear and and like he's just a he's he's pretty much an animal. It's like it's our he's our King Kong. He, he that's probably the, I, it, maybe not politically correct, but he, he does seem like he that. Uh, yeah. He, he, if he if he had fifty five fights that he won, fifty would be by knockout. That's a crazy percentage. When I was younger and you as well, people would buy these pay per view fights. Yep. And then Mike Tyson would knock out Michael Spinks in nine seconds. And people would go, why did I pay for this? The yeah. great thing about this Netflix fight, the fight is on Netflix, is that mm -hmm. if you have Netflix, I believe you can just tune in and watch it. We all want to see, and, and I believe it's uh, Jake Paul. Logan mm -hmm. Paul, I think, is the wrestler, and Jake Paul is the boxer. I'm not positive about that. I don't either. Uh, I don't, Yeah. Uh, I'm the only influencer that I like, uh, and I'm not going to fight Mike Tyson. At, didn't, at any point. didn't the guy, didn't the other guy, his brother, wasn't he the YouTube guy that went out to the suicide forest and found the guy okay. hanging and got in trouble? Yes. He, yeah. in bed, there's a, there's a place in Asia where people unfortunately hang themselves and, uh, suicide people, forest. Yeah. Yes. That's right. I'm trying not to use the S word. I feel like that could be a, uh, yeah. Right. But I don't know. Maybe not. I'm trying to guess the algorithm. Yeah. Um, last night uh, it was the safest show I ever did, and I still had to appeal it. Uh, but so he thought it was a good idea to keep filming and show these people on YouTube, and it was not. Uh, I'm sure he had to appeal and apologize, but he has a lot of money and a lot of viewers. Anyway, obviously, we want to see Mike Tyson knock him out as fast as possible. Anything other than a knockout, the fight is rigged. Mike Tyson says it's not rigged, but Mike Tyson also knows how to sell a fight. Uh, yes. Mike Tyson, I believe, is 57 years old. Uh, that means nothing. Uh, an amateur fighter against a guy with Mike Tyson's, uh, uh, he knows boxing. He knows the science. And, yeah. uh, but the, here's the problem. There's some talk that they're going to make it two-minute rounds. There's some talk that they're going to wear very large gloves. Mm -hmm. If those things happen and headgear happens, It'll be very hard for Mike Tyson to knock him out. But Mike Tyson can knock somebody out by working the body just as much as working the head. And I don't think, uh, you, you know, so we're going we're gonna to see. I, I'm hoping, okay. you know, Floyd Mayweather fought him and kind of danced around the whole time. And, uh, and that was that, or they call it an exhibition. I would like to see Mike Tyson uh, knock this guy uh, out. I think we're all hoping for that. And then fun. maybe that Mike Tyson... Uh, go back to selling weed because that's what he does now. Uh, not like on the street corner, like he has. He yeah, has his he's own. got his. Uh, he's got ear edibles, edible ears. That's <laughs> great. The I remember that fight with Holyfield where he bit the ear. Yeah, the that was great. Was, and, and then he said he did it to protect his children, which is a, the best response to biting someone's ear off. He told fighters that he was going to f them in the in the backside. You know. <laughs> Yeah, and make I love it. I, I love his fighting spirit. I I wish the original Rocky would have had more of that dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but he the problem was he when he got out of jail, he wasn't training and he thought he could beat anybody like he did when he was younger. And what happened was, and Holyfield had great trainers. They realized that if Mike Tyson couldn't get rid of you in the first two or three rounds. He didn't necessarily have that stamina of what do I do when I can't knock a guy out? And what happens right. is he'll bite your ear off. Um, yeah. right, hold on. Mark Sanchez, thank you. First super chat of the night. Did you ever find your CNR glasses? I don't know what that is. You know what that it's is, like Wednesday? Guns and Roses? Got, uh, well, that's, that's what I was thinking. We can't say the C word. No. Um, CNR. Uh I don't know what that means. CCR? Are we talking about my Credence Clearwater? Credence. Yes. Anyway, uh, I know that the I know that the kids didn't tune in to see uh, uh, us talk about uh, Mike Tyson. I, no, I, went, I, prepared, but... I prepared a little something. I know. Uh oh, look who's here. The boss is back. Uh, Michelle, Please. everyone has lost their minds. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, punish these people uh, too badly. But let's make sure that they don't ruin everyone's chat experience. I hate to talk like an adult, but uh, yeah, uh, you guys better behave now. Uh, the the adult is here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need some. Yeah, we need somebody to crack the whip around here. Yeah, it was getting a little 
uh, uh, crazy. All right. Uh, I want to get to some of these questions, and I will. But first, I got something prepared. Wednesday, you and I have been talking about uh, your, your diet and the foods you eat and what you won't mm -hmm. eat. Um, mm -hmm. And then I started researching Universal Studios Hollywood because we're talking about going and seeing mm -hmm. what you'll eat. Now, I'm learning that it's probably better not to tell you too much about what you eat is, is what I've learned. So now yes. I wouldn't tell you to try something that's completely ridiculous. And Universal doesn't have anything that I would consider gross. But I'm learning you don't really want to know like what's in the sauce kind of uh, a thing. Right. So they're doing this thing. It's the 60th anniversary of the tram, the Universal Studios tram. When the tram opened, it, they didn't have a theme park. They were just trying to make some extra money. So they charged two fifty dollars to ride the tram. And then you would see a special effects show and a makeup show. And, you know, maybe you saw the psycho house. So mm -hmm. anyway, this new version that's coming up, they are going to let you get off the tram and go walk to the psycho house and, and do all these kind of photo ops and things. And they've also introduced a new menu, which got me thinking, what about theme parks around the world? What about mm -hmm. Universal Studios Japan? What right. could they have to offer that you would or wouldn't eat? So I, I have the menu here. And, oh, wow. And we're going to see what you would have. Now, let me preface by saying Japan, uh, a to a Disney and Universal, they keep old rides. They don't, uh, like Disney has not banned the Song of the South ride, Splash Mountain. In Japan, they don't care. It's not, a, it's, not it's still there. Uh, uh, and they and Universal Studios in Japan has a Jaws ride. They don't oh, have no. the Jaws ride any longer in Florida, but they do have it. I think uh, the governor of Florida tried to tax Jaws and he had to leave. And so okay. uh, he went to Japan. So I started researching a little bit more and I said, well, I would like to go to Japan and try some of these things. So they have a few restaurants. I'm going to bring this up. If we freeze, uh, then uh, uh, Wednesday will uh, host. Uh, okay, here we go. This is the restaurants in Universal Studios Japan. The first one is Amity Ice Cream. Now, oh, I think you would eat Amity Ice Cream, no problem, depending on how weird it gets, maybe not. But right. the one that we're going to focus on is the Amity Landing Restaurant. Okay, so this is uh, for those who don't know Amity is where Jaws takes place. Okay, and so yeah, here we go. There's the hours if anyone's looking at going. So here's the menu. Okay, first of all, I love these plates. Look at this uh, 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 plate here. It looks like uh, there's like a shark that holds your sandwich. Do you see this? And uh, so here it is. It looks like Amity. Are you still there, Wednesday? Uh-oh. Are you there, Wednesday? Uh-oh. You following? He's so offended by the, the idea that he's he, ha he had a log out. All right, he'll be back. Uh, and, and then we'll find out what he would eat. Uh, from that that place. All right, uh, let's see what's going on until Wednesday comes back. Is everyone behaving now? Okay. Well, you guys have good questions, but we got to wait till he gets back to answer them. All right. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, pe people have good questions for you that we'll have to go to. So, okay, let's. let's all right. So you, you see what the, the meals uh, look like, right? So hold on. I, I couldn't see what I couldn't see what was going on. My my phone started ringing and then I and then I couldn't hear anything anymore. So OK. All right. So uh, where, what did I miss here? So I was ex explaining that Amity Landing, uh, Amity is the town from mm -hmm. uh, Jaws, right? Yes. And so as we look at this, the food comes in a little Jaws cup. Uh, okay. As you can see, the plate. The plate has a shark in it. Oh, and that's cool. I, I like that. I, I think that would be a great collector's item. Yeah. Uh, and I would have to have that. But hold on. I'm trying to find. That's super cool looking. But I'm curious. Uh, of let, Let's just say we're in Japan. Mm -hmm. What would you eat here? Okay. So here, here we go. Uh, I get it back to the Amity Village Shipyard is seen in Jaws. Don't miss trying the shrimp club sandwich now it's not letting me click on anything but 
This is the fried shrimp sandwich. Now, this is like a, a like a long bun. Depending on what part of the world you're from, they could call this a hoagie or a hero. Right, the inside, right. it has fried shrimp, and it has uh, it, uh, it's got some fries. Would you eat this? No, I would no. not eat the shrimp. I would I would go for the chicken sandwich meal or the fried chicken meal. I'm not a I'm not a big seafood, not a shrimp guy yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's going to make the next one difficult. This is a combination sandwich that features shark meat with a meat with a meat sauce. Oh. Uh, I don't know that I, I would probably try shark meat. See, uh, it's, that's interesting, Wednesday, and I thought you might say that. Michelle said the yeah, same thing. I think I would try. I mean, I've tried alligator uh, before. Mm -hmm. um, so I just feel weird when I eat animals like that because I I don't like to eat animals that could that could kill me. I feel mm -hmm. like that's going to be because I feel like if I eat shark meat, then some day I'm going to be like on a ferry going to Finland and fall off into the ice river and eat, eaten by an ice shark or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, revenge. Well, if revenge. you saw Jaws for the revenge, you know that the sharks families get revenge. Doesn't matter what temperature the water, uh, they will go after Lance Guest and Michael Caine and uh, Mary of Von Peebles. <laughs> or Jaws three. We got to talk about Louis Gossett Jr. We lost this week. Yes, rest in peace, Academy yes. Award winner Louis Gossett Jr. Uh, although we don't care about his, uh, those movies, we care about Jaws three. And, Enemy uh, Mine. Enemy Mine was a was another good one. Uh, is he an Iron Eagle? Oh, he is. He's Chappy, an Iron Eagle. Chappy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chappy. Mm. So you might try the shark meat. Yeah, um, I would probably try the shark meat over shrimp for some reason. Okay. I don't know. Then they have I a chicken sandwich meal. Do yeah. you, would you eat breaded chicken? I would get... I would... I would get it plain. I wouldn't get any of this stuff on. No lettuce, no sauce, unless it was like a hot sauce or something like that. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm not really into condiments or making the sandwich look fancy with lettuce or any sort of, uh, you know, any stuff like that. Just looks like, just look, get it off there. We don't need that. Fried chicken meal. That's fine, right? Yeah, that would be okay. Okay. Now they have a kid's meal. And uh, uh -huh. again, I don't know why nothing's clicking, but uh, and the click this kid's meal. I think this is eleven hundred yen. You you've been to Japan. I don't know what that means. Yes. What does it mean? What does it say? Uh, it says one thousand one hundred. Is that expensive? One thousand one hundred yen is the is the denomination there. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. That's probably ten bucks, maybe. Uh, well, the shark meat nugget meal looks pretty cool. This is the whole they, packaging. I, I would try it just on the packaging alone. Well, yeah, that's what I thought. And don't couldn't you just see us going home to the airport with fifty of these jaws? Packages? Oh, I'd be trying to take all of this home. I would have it behind me, and like I would have all of this. Mm -hmm. So the shark meat meat nuggets. Now I bet you there's a very little shark meat. Shark meat's probably expensive, so probably. it's probably a chicken nugget with a hint of. Shark meat. Now it comes with tartar sauce. I don't see you having that. Mm -hmm. No, not in the tartar sauce. Yeah, um, I don't. You know, I I think tartar sauce was kind of ruined for me when they started adding that to like toothpaste descriptions. Like, oh, tartar control. You're like, oh, I don't want to eat tartar sauce because then you might get more tartar on your teeth. You know, I never thought of it that way, but you have a yes. good point. So yes. the kids' meals: fried chicken. Fries, a pancake with Jaws's face on the pancake. That's pretty cool. A dessert, which is a little glass kind of jello-y thing that has little gummy sharks in it. It looks fun. Wow. And yeah. an orange drink. Uh, and that's recommended for children up to age 11, which our maturity is probably uh, right around there. Yeah, um, I would say definitely right around that age. For dessert. Now, would you have this? This is... The cream soda Swiss roll. Yes, I would right, have. So you're not, you're I would not have it. Bad. I it just just the packaging alone. I mean, I would still try it. Yeah, that's what. I, I, it's we're suckers for packaging. All right. Well, now yeah. let's see. 
we, we, that's the Jaws restaurant. Now, they used to have a Universal Monsters Cafe, but they've, mm -hmm. they've gotten rid of that since. Uh, Finnegan sounds like shit we have in America. Uh, Discovery restaurant sounds like nonsense. The Beverly Hills Boulangerie. Uh, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's pick a place. Uh, well, let's look at the boardwalk snacks. Let's see if there's anything Wednesday 13 could eat. You know, Wednesday, we could do like a, a like we could book like trips like the, the, this this audience. They're all well behaved. They could come mm -hmm. with us and we could have like an outing to like a, we can cruise to Japan. I'm just riffing with this. Um, <laughs> this cruise over to Japan. Mm -hmm. It takes yeah. 30. It takes 30 days. I looked it up. Yes. Oh, no, maybe it was a little less. Australia was 30 days. To cruise oh. to Australia, 30 days. I would do it. Okay, now this Whoa. sounds rough to me. This is a pizza Ugh. Danish set. It's tuna with mayonnaise and sakura shrimp. What? It's too much. That, just, that sounds insane. No, thank you. I don't even know if I would try that for the show. It would take a lot of super chats. Oh. Uh, then a... Yeah. A pizza Danish set teriyaki chicken. I mean, I guess I would try that, but you probably would not. I would just go for the blue Hawaiian jaw splash. That looks I amazing. Had a feeling. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. And uh, um, okay, let's see what else they, they may have. So that's the boardwalk snacks. The ice cream, I'm not so concerned about because I feel like you would eat most ice cream. I would try most ice creams. Okay, let's see. Uh, this is delicious. Me, the Cookie Kitchen. That's the. the we're not. We, let's try the Beverly Hills Bouja Bouja, whatever it's called. Um, yes. You live near Beverly Hills. This might be something you like. This is where Matt Thorne would go to eat. Uh, okay. Um, if he was there. Okay. The All Might Special Pork Cutlet Sandwich Set. <laughs> wow. All this right. Is a pork cutlet sandwich. Now here's the problem. It comes with tomato curry soup. You wouldn't have that. Mm, I don't think so. Okay, but you're more open than I th I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't think I would try that. That just looks a little little too much for me. A sandwich set? Why See, is everything mm, in a set? I don't know. Uh, oh, they, okay. like Easter, they like Easter there. I noticed that. Easter sandwich, smoked ham and grilled chicken. It's, why couldn't it be one or the other? Uh, mm -hmm. And then a cup of salad and a soft drink. By the way, next to soft drink, it always says rights reserved. Apparently, Japan has trademarked the soft drink. Huh. They probably did it behind everyone's back. You know what I mean? They probably were shady and just tried to register the mark for soft drink. You know how people are. Um, then crazy they world. have crazy world. Then they yes. have this thing, which is called the Easter. Hey, San salad with colorful vegetables. That's got to oh, be a no. That looks like an Easter basket to me right here. Like, that mm -hmm. literally looks like if you just ate a bunch of plastic Easter eggs. That's what that looks like to me. Probably as good. Uh, here's the recommended dishes. I mean, listen, if we went, we'd have to go to the Jaws place. Uh, that, looks, here's that looks really cool. They have a Mel's drive. I mean, what do we need that for? We could have that here. Uh, Every time I hear Mel's drive in, I think about Mel. Wasn't it was Mel on, on Alice, right? Mel of was course. there. You know, uh, there's a chance that Wednesday and I will be in the Phoenix area. And mm -hmm. I will tell you Wednesday that the actual Alice restaurant is in the Phoenix area. We might, we might have to go and see it. Wow. All that's there is that sign that's in the credits. But uh, so was Alice be, Cooper. He's from he's from Arizona too. How was the coincidence that the two most famous Alices are in Arizona? I never thought about it like that, but yeah. you uh, you are right. Yeah. All right, now this uh, establishment is called. Oh boy, uh, this is the Studio <laughs> Stars Restaurant. Uh oh, I don't know what I did. Uh, hold on. Yeah, Thank this God. is looking too fancy for me. This is like mm -mm, too yeah. much. All right. This is a uh, Kaijuro uh, Rengoku Hamburg steak plate meal. What? I mean, I would 
try it for content, but I don't know. Does that mean Hamburg is in like Hamburg, Germany, or Hamburg is in Hamburger? You'd have to ask the Japanese. It looks like it comes with a bowl of rice, naturally, uh, uh, up here in the left, as you can see. see and then see I don't how know that, how the, uh, how like, I guess that's like ketchup and something like smear, like someone that's tried to be like, like make the Joker face right there with the smile. Yes. See, I don't like that. I looks like someone's playing with your food and went, oh, well, now we're going to serve it to you. Here you go. Yes, and a bowl of porridge uh, as well. Oh, porridge just doesn't I don't know. sound good. It's got the I word poor in it. I can't eat it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we only eat the rich. Uh, yes. <laughs> this is the delicious, delicious beef sukiyaki and baked curry meal. Mm, no thanks. I mean, it's, it's twice the delicious, but I don't see you having curry, and I do think there's too much stuff going on. Now, this is the big bro Rengoku kids meal. Uh, uh, and I don't know what any of that is. That looks, no, that's too dangerous for me. What mm -hmm. about the flame Hashira's orange no-bake cheesecake? I'd have that. Uh, I don't think you like that sauce all around it. That What's that chocolate thing over there? The dark darkness? It's what is that? It's funny you ask. Yeah, that's the the, the darkness. Through darkness. Yeah, that's the uh, Mugen train running through darkness. The darkness, uh, you know, they sing that band, that song about a thing called love or whatever. Yes. And yes. it comes with the Cass Cassius Clay mousse and chocolate. That's a lot. The Japanese like to mix things. You notice that? They they do. Yeah, they I think I would, I, I would try the dessert over the food, I believe. I, I think so to i think me personally i could eat uh, a, a lot of this and as much as i like sharks i think if it meant for good content uh i would try i think i would be more up for the shark uh, 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 nuggets anyway um so that uh that that's just a start next time we'll talk about i see i don't want to tell you too much about the food offerings in universal Hollywood. Let it be a surprise, and that way you don't want to have me thinking about it. I'll, I'll lose sleep right. thinking about it. That's what I was thinking. It's better we see it, and and we'll see what you you do. And uh, I can assure you that none of the things you just saw are available in uh, Berlin, in Hollywood. All right. Uh, let's see. I, I Some of you had really good questions, and I got to get to them fast because I've got to get to uh, – I'm going to Utah in the morning you're going to utah tomorrow huh yeah i'm gonna be in salt lake city utah for the auto rama car show stephen piercy is appearing i'm there three days two to yeah, two and a half you know people mm -hmm. think you just fly in you do an appearance and you leave no that um but i am going to uh i, I want to go see they filmed halloween four and halloween five oh in, that's right yeah yeah so i mean if i get the energy you know, I always say this time I'm on the road. I'm going to work on some editing. I'm going to do. I do nothing. I I I, I do nothing. Um, okay, let's see. Everybody's crazy. I think. <laughs> Which yeah, I mean, I'm it's right. kind of. If, if things were about. if things were too. Someone um, says they think they upset me. I don't know what you're even talking about. I think you'd have a hard time upsetting Wednesday. Yeah. He's a pretty lenient guy. Wednesday, what do you think of the new Crow trailer? <laughs> oh, if it's anywhere half as good as the Roadhouse, we're in for a treat. Um, yeah. Wow. I, you know, I don't know. It's like I was, I was sitting around the other day looking at my toys in my room, petting my cat, and I was looking. I was like. And I watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre one the other day. It was on, uh, it was on Pluto, and I was watching it. And I was just, and when it got done, I just did this. And I was just like, "This is still an excellent movie. I've seen it, a, I don't know how many times." And I just, and, and it's still good to me. And I'm so glad that all these remakes have not ruined it for me. But it has kind of for some of these, some of these movies, like. Like, uh, it, it's weird. Like, and I'm not saying anything bad about Rob Zombie, but like, like having this new era of the monsters come in is kind of 
put some pressure on the old monsters. It's just weird having that messed with a little bit, you know, it's been meddled with, um, you know, so I don't like some of my movies being, being meddled with. So, uh, the crow is one of those movies that I could, whatever. I, I think I've only seen the crow once, but it was good. And the, I, uh, the remake, but you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. And especially uh, like just the crow character from the image, what I've seen of what this new one is versus the other one. It's, it's laughable. Well, I think he's machine gun Kelly or something like that. Or, I mean, or yeah, he looks like he would be on a, that ridiculousness show, like as a guest. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like uh, uh, he gets hit in the balls, you know, uh, and, and falls down and laughs and, and uh, drinks too much and ch jumps off roofs in the back of pools and falls through tables lit on fire. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, I told the story not too long ago. I, I was going to do a segment once, to, you know, 10 things that most people don't know about me. And I did have an agent for acting when I lived in New York and I did audition for the movie, The Crow, not for Brandon Lee's. I was much younger. It was a small part. Movie was filmed in North Carolina. Your home state killed Brandon Lee. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I want to go there and do a video about it. Uh, the former Coralco, Coralco, Coralco Studios is the location. Uh, obviously, I did not get the part. I still have the original script, and the script was probably better than the movie in the long run. I do enjoy the movie. I've seen it a few times. Um, Ernie Hudson from uh, Ghostbusters plays the cop. Mm -hmm. And uh, the little girl is alive. But a lot of people from that movie uh, pass. Obviously, we know about Brandon Lee, but the actor who pulled the trigger, Michael Massey, I think is his name. He's passed. And I don't think he was ever say, the same since he did it. For people who don't know, I'll give a quick overview. It was a guy named Jeff Amato, who was actually a very close friend of Brandon Lee, and he actually plays him in some of the footage they had to reshoot. They CGI the face. He, uh, They loaded a gun on the set the day before the fatal day, and they put they used a real bullet in, in the gun for a, sh a shot uh, of the, no pun intended. And a little piece of the bullet was still in the barrel of the gun. And when they load it with blanks, squibs, they call them, it, it pushed out this little tiny piece of a bullet, dime size, I believe. And it went into Brandon Lee's abdomen. And in this scene, uh, he, he died, obviously. And uh, so that actor, I don't think was ever the same. He didn't mean it. He didn't, you know, uh, but it's a lot to live with. And so that a lot of there's a lot of other things that have plagued that movie. I, I like the, there's a graphic novel. I'm not a giant comic book person. I do have a first edition graphic novel signed by James O'Barr. I like the story. I like the revenge thing. I, I like, uh, and as far as the movie goes, I like that they play the cure when he turns into, uh, when Eric Draven becomes the crow. Um, and I think that it's a, it's a great concept. I don't think it needs to be done. Or it looks like they were lazy. They try to make something modern. Uh, and just looks like it's another uh, another miss. Yeah, it's a good story. It's it's not a hard story to tell. I don't know if you've ever thought about this because Easter just passed, mm -hmm. but technically the story of the Bible is a little bit like the crow. Uh, you know, uh, 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 basically, you know, Jesus is going to come back. You know, or has he's he he's, he's risen? I believe on Sunday, mm -hmm. and the crow is going to come back. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that Jesus is going to go around and avenge, you know, the Romans who nailed him to the cross. I don't think that that's what he's going to do. But I, he could be pretty goth, you know, and uh, um, and I don't know. But that's what I, I thought about the, the crow. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't think I'm going to see it. Yeah, I don't think so either. But, you know, you got me thinking of a good spinoff movie. I don't know why I thought about this, but like thinking about revenge. You remember on... Um on Happy Gilmore, or was it Happy Gilmore, no, Billy Madison, the part where Steve Buscemi plays the guy who has the note of people to kill, and he happens, Adam Sandler calls him. What about a spinoff of that where he goes and kills the rest of those people on that list? See, that's the kind of movie I'm looking for, something like that, a good spinoff like that. Yeah, I think you have, I think you have something. Uh, yeah. These are, we have these. Uh, oh, uh, Charles Nelson Riley, the yellow ones. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Mark is asking about the, the, these glasses. Oh, hold on. A company called Spectacle Eyewear made me these glasses, a bunch mm -hmm. of them, and they're a great company. And I, 
I want to wish the owner of the company a, a, a get well soon. He had some, he had some uh, cancer, and uh, uh, he's get, he's getting better. He says, and that's great. He he wrote me to ask me where to send new glasses. I told him he should worry about his health. He doesn't have to worry about making me glasses. When I got these glasses, I insulted them constantly. I'm not sure why he would want to give me anything else, but. Um, but what happened, the confusion with these glasses, these Charles Nelson Riley uh, or Sirhan Sirhan or some other serial killer glasses, is uh, that these are, uh, they're, they're, they're bi. They're bi. Not that there's anything wrong with being bi, but uh, uh, bifocal, I mean. You have to, he didn't tell me, you have to look down your nose or something. I don't know if you wear these type of things. Those look, um, th those look like Amber Vision glasses I used to see an advertisement for, Amber Vision. Mm -hmm. I remember Amber Vision, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember Amber Lynn better, but yeah, Amber Amber Vision, yeah. But so anyway, I do have these, and I'm going to get an ascot. You know, when I took them off, I suddenly realized I'm blind. You know, uh, you look, you look. It's kind of like an Elvis kind of look. I kind of like them. You know what? You should write them and tell them they should feature the opti grab feature from the jerk, so you can pull it off and it reduces slippage. This is something I never thought I would hear said on the show, but you're definitely right. Okay, I'm trying to, I want to say hello to people. The chat has really gone to hell. Oh, someone said they look like Bono glasses. You know, someone called me Bono. Uh, I saw on some comment I had on glasses. I had these big glasses and a hat, and somebody said, that dude thinks he's Bono. Wow. Yeah, that was, this, this is some random comment from... I don't even know what, but I just, you know, this is funny how people associate glasses and hat. Like, this is Mick Mars. Those glasses are Bono. Um, you know, no in eyebrows, Vegas, you know. In Vegas, if you have black hair, you're Chris Angel. Oh, I've been called Chris Angels many times. Mm -hmm. Nikki Six or Chris Angel, you know. Yeah, that happens a lot. Okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to start at the bottom and try to work my way up. Uh, Wednesday, I don't know if I asked you, are you gonna see Ghostbusters Frozen Tundra? Is that something you care about? I didn't see the other one either. I forgot about it. Um, I like the Ghostbusters movies. I saw them uh, I saw them both in the theaters, the first two. Uh, I didn't watch the one with the with the ladies. Oh, there's Slimer, is that his name? Is that, it? This is is that a, still his? This is a That's Slimer the... popcorn vessel. That's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. And you fill him with popcorn. But if you're like us and you don't want popcorn on your Slimer, they yeah. will put you in, in a separate bucket. I have not seen it yet. I went to see Rad. Oh, and then yeah. I, I brought the popcorn vessel. That's huge. That's a pretty cool prop. Yeah. They also yeah. have the trap to, for popcorn. I'm oh, really? See okay. I'm gonna right. see I, I saw The Afterlife, which was the first one back. And it was a good fan service they did what you wanted to see and of uh -huh. course dan Aykroyd, bill murray ernie hudson prominent parts a lot of people don't like that there's kids in it uh new I kids hate kids yeah and the one <laughs> kid who's in every horror movie is in it a finn a, a wolf wolf boy uh you know, oh, know he's in everything stranger things and he's in uh oh that stranger things kid and he's in it yeah. and he's about nine feet tall now and then Paul Rudd is in it, but don't let, I, I'm not selling it very well. It, they, you're it, not, it, you're not, but I, but I, I, I think I end up watching, that's gonna be one of those ride into England. I'm going to watch it on the airplane kind of movie sort of deal. Watch the afterlife one. Don't start with, uh, 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 I, I sometimes I think, I, I think Wednesday, I, I don't think I act old and I certainly don't think you act old, but some of the shit that people are saying, I think I need an interpreter. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to relate with the with the kids here. Mm -hmm. I don't know sometimes that I know what they're talking about. Well, uh, I know that Lorraine, uh, who's a regular viewer, wants to see my big green cup. And uh, for those who haven't seen uh, this, this is a creature from the Black Lagoon, a uh, tiki cup. That's what that is. Someone says R.I.P. Joe Flaherty. Yes, he was an yes. excellent. An Count excellent, Floyd. Uh, Count Floyd was the greatest. Mm-hmm. He had to smell a vision, remember? He had to use scratch the TV and smell it. I, that was amazing. I think, I think that that's a, a, a celebrity passing that might go under the radar a little bit. There was a show called SCTV 
based oh. out of Canada. There was the Canadian version of Saturday Night Live. <clears throat> yeah, I was weird. watching. Uh, I was watching some clips of that this week. I started watching uh, SCTV gets recommended to me on, and I was watching. Uh, John Candy had a segment on there called the Fish and Musician, and he had the Plasmatics play on the show. Like really, he had like bands. He had the <laughs> the Kinks played on it. It was <laughs> so weird. It was a very weird uh, a show, but Joe Flaherty was great, and uh, rest in peace to him. Uh, 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 Boa tried to take his daughter to see it, uh, Ghostbusters. They had no souvenirs left. Yeah, they, these things uh -huh. go fast. Uh, 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 Kendallin wants you to know Wednesday, just to let you know, that she is here for you, just so you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, in, in, at some point, you know, if you need that, that's good to know. Okay. Uh, Chris loves your hat. Would love to know where you get it. Uh, I'm not Someone sure. Someone made hear. this hat for me. Uh, I bought this hat at an army supply store. It was just plain black. And the guy that made my clothes, I gave him my hat one day and said, Hey, what can you do to this? And he did this to it. And I've had it ever since. So it's a one of a kind. Wow. I don't even know. I mean, I'm trying, like, because I'm reading it backwards, I'm not sure what I'm saying. Uh, do you know who will open for Steven at the Arcada? I do not. I just got announced. Tickets just went on sale. I don't. It would be nice if it was Wednesday 13, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. You know, I've ever talked about this. I'm, I, when I meet Steven again, I'm not going to be, hey, remember we met? But I, I met Steven Piercy at the... It was a thing in North Carolina. It was like called like Speed Street. And I think Twisted Sister played that night and Stephen Piercy played before. And I went up to meet Stephen Piercy because his guitar player was the guitar player in the Sea Hags. And that's who I wanted to meet more than Stephen Piercy at the time because I was like, Frank, oh, the Sea Hags. Frank, Frankie and, Wilson. Yeah. And I, and I met them and met Stephen. And I was like, hey, I was like, we were supposed to tour together because of, um, in 2005, uh, Stephen Piercy went out with Wasp, and I was going to be the support band before that. And I canceled because I it was we weren't making any money, and it just didn't sound right. The agent, I think, it was Artist Worldwide. It was they had, dealing with them, and either way, I backed out of it. And I believe that was the tour where Blackie canceled ninety percent of the shows because the microphone wouldn't fit on stage. Mm -hmm. So I remember Steven going, I was like, hey, we're well, supposed to do that tour with you. And he was like, I was like, but we canceled. And he's like, oh, you were smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, so uh, that was my only interaction with Steven Piercy so far. Yeah, well, you'll you'll see him soon. It'd be nice to uh, to do some shows. Okay. Yeah. Uh, here's a good question. I like this one. I don't know if he'll give you the honest answer, but it's good to, uh, this is Leah. Uh, mm -hmm. Alia, and she says, "Well, uh, uh, Wednesday, what's the weirdest thing you have ever been asked at a meet and greet?" Oh, I don't even know. Uh, I mean, I know I know some Wednesday that you told me, but I don't know if they're meant for public consumption. I don't know. What did they? T what you tell me? I don't know. I don't remember. I, I I'm drawing a well, blank. You tell right me now. stuff, but sometimes they come with a precursor of. <laughs> I can't tell. I, if I could tell you these stories, it would be great. Well, one of them, well, let's say maybe this is okay. I don't think it's bad. One of, one of them involved, involved a vial of blood. Oh, yeah, the blood thing. Uh, yeah, somebody uh, gave my, uh, brought a package or like a, a envelope to our merch girl in Germany one time. And she brought it to me. I was like, hey, this fan brought this to me. Uh, wanted you to have it. And I opened it up and it was a letter. And it was like, hey, Wednesday uh we're big fans of you blah 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 uh, i don't know if you'll do this or not but inside this package is these little vials and there was a syringe and they wanted to know if i would if i would take my blood and put it back in the package and give it to them because they wanted to make a little vial of blood for their necklace you know and i'm reading it and i'm just like wow that's that's pretty intense. That's kind of, that's crazy, but it's also kind of cool too. At least they're not bullshit and they're, you know, they're asking for the, you know, so I couldn't, I couldn't be a pussy about it and be like, Oh, well, I got to send them something back. So I've just looked around the dressing room and we were, we were in Germany and Germany for some reason, 
in our rider in the backstage area there's everything there's orange juice pineapple juice and there just happened to be cherry juice it looked like blood it was just in a bottle and i'm like oh okay well let's open that so i took the syringe out i took the cherry juice i filled the syringe full of full of cherry juice it looked like blood i was pretty impressed with it so autographed the package put it back in the thing gave it back to the merch girl blah 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 and i think it was like maybe a uh later that night or maybe the next show i saw the same fans and they were like oh wednesday you're so funny uh you put cherry juice in in that and i'm like how did you know it was cherry juice you know i don't know if they tasted this uh if it leaked out i don't know but that's the mystery there uh so i just always give them back to the fans Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that I think that is the perfect answer for that question. Going back, I mean, people are some people think that they've upset Wednesday. I don't think he's uh, upset. I don't think anyone is. I, I think you're all OK. I think you're all over worrying. If he was upset, he would probably tell you or he wouldn't be here. So I would. Yeah, I, I don't even. It, oh. I get upset. Yeah. I just go. Zur, zur, I just, just turn it off. I just. Yeah, I go. I go to my quiet place, but uh, no, I no one's you, no one's said anything to upset me. If I was upset, you'd know about it. I will tell you, uh, Wednesday is one of the easiest going people that I know. I'm sure you've got moods like everybody, but uh, he, he's pretty yeah. laid back. I definitely get in my moods. I've uh, <laughs> I, I want to say like my uh, you know my my band guys could tell you I. You know, I'm sure they, and I would probably sit back and laugh if they tell us about Wednesday. They could tell you. I get in my little diva moments, and uh, there's just certain things I I like at my shows, and 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 if I don't get it, I can be a little bitch about it. Uh, but it's, um, you know, I, I want to say my bass player told somebody he was like, he's like, yeah, Wednesday's the the only guy in the, you know, if 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 he's cool, everything else is cool, but he's he's the only diva in this whole project. I'm like, yes. So I hate when someone outgirls me in the in the tours. If I get a girl on tour and they're doing more girl stuff than I am, I don't like it. I'm like, you got to back down a little bit. You're wearing too much yeah. makeup. Calm it down. Well, well, even though I say uh, that you're laid back, you, you do run your own brand. Wednesday 13 is you. It's your, I mean, yes, it's the band as well, but it's you. And yeah. you are responsible at the end of the day, of course, you have a tour manager and you have a manager and you have an agent. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, everything's on you. If something goes wrong, the guys in the band aren't going to be to blame or they or they don't have the concern that you're going to have. You want everything to be the way you want it. You've created this vi vision of what yeah. Wednesday 15 is going to be. Your shows are never sort of just dialed in. And I can see no. if something isn't right, if the if the ramp in front of the stage isn't right or things that are part of your show or the lights. That yeah, I could see you wouldn't be in the best uh, mood. That's why that's why I'm nervous about this Vegas thing. I'm excited. Like I said on the last show, I was like, I'm I'm trying to get more excited about it, and I think I I am about it. But it's also one of those throw and go really quick things. It's like everything working against us. We got to play in the sunlight. We got to play in the heat. It's like everything is out of the element, and it's just like. I don't know. I just feel like we're just being released. We're like it's like those those animals and just just release into the wild. Go and we're just and you got and you got one shot at it. And we probably have a thirty minute set, so it's just a million things in my brain are go, are going to be going crazy. You'll get to see it. You'll get to see me flip out before the show. And twenty, you see, you will get to see a whole different version of me. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to document it so that everyone could see, could see you yeah. uh, freak out. But I, I mean, look, it's also going to be daytime on a hot day in Las Vegas. You know what I mean? And your music works better in the dark. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> all heavy metal works better uh, in the dark. Uh, but, yeah, but, uh, but, it's, but it's fun to go out and do these shows that are against, you know, kind of everything is kind of against you. You know, like I said, going out and playing in the sun, everything is completely opposite. But uh, but I think that bringing it brings this little danger element to it like it's it's also kind of i don't know that's what makes it kind of fun i i, I wish it was more planned out and i knew everything was going to be perfect but i know it's not going to be uh okay uh wednesday uh, uh, m is asking a question that can't be answered how many toys do you have i mean where do you start 
I need counts. Yeah, this is like I said, this isn't my only toys I have. This is just one little area. I kind of have toys all over my house. Uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many I have. It's it's too many, too many to even begin to count. It's in the thousands. My my collection as well. I mean, I'm looking right now. <laughs> My kitchen yeah. is not a traditional kitchen. You know, there's stuff everywhere. Yeah, I have stuff all over the house. Like in my kitchen, I have like little Creature from the Black Lagoon stuff around the sink. I have, it's everywhere. And then in my little man cave outside area of my house is a whole different thing. It's throwing stars and action figures. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's kind of everywhere throughout the house. Have you ever played a gig and got paid in G.I. Joe figures? Uh, no, I would. I bet you, though, you've played a gig and spent money on G.I. Joe figures. Yeah, I've definitely done that. Um, yeah, there's one guy who used to come comes out to my shows every once in a while, uh, and he would just, after the show, he used to be our game, he would come out and he would basically bring me figures and he would be like, all right, you can have these if you can name them. And he would just sit there and pull them out and I'd be like, all right, that's Shockwave. And that's from 1987. Okay, let's have that one. All right, I'll take that. Guy. So it was, that was the game. That was a that was a one of my drinking games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, do you have any Charlie's Angels merch? I don't. Uh, I got the DVD. I may have a T-shirt somewhere, but I don't have any uh, any Charlie's Angels anything. I have some autographs. Mm -hmm. uh, Cheryl Ladd, Barra Fawcett, Kate Jackson, and Jacqueline Smith. I pretty much have all of them. Oh, and Tanya Roberts later. I have stuff signed by her. Um, I don't have anything else. They made dolls and things that are really cool. They're probably very expensive. Do they make Just a Tanya Roberts doll? I don't know. Did they? I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know if they did or not. I don't she think was, so. She's my they favorite. Probably... She was She was my crush in the Beastmaster. Beastmaster, yeah. She shows a rack in Beastmaster, right? She does. She does. Yeah. And I believe that she was in Playboy uh, around that same time. And uh, I believe we have Bush in that mm -hmm. issue. That's true. You're right. Of course. In Playboy. Yeah, I liked her a lot, too. We grew up on similar. Uh, there was a theme in those old kind of movies, especially fantasy movies. Yeah. Game of Thrones, which I don't watch, but those Never kind of. It. Yeah, we have that in common. Those kind of shows, I think, do this too, though. There was always a scene where a fair maiden had to take a bath in a lake. and uh, This is what I looked for as a kid. I always, I would go run to the woods and just hope one day I would go down to the creek and there would be like some hot chick taking a bath. I'm like, oh, hey, let me help you. I'm only 10. I, I probably thought the same thing. Instead, <laughs> the only thing you saw at your creek would be uh, yeah, Dawson's Creek uh, in North Carolina. Well, that's much later in life, but yes. That's yeah. true. At that point, you weren't looking at... Uh, right. Did you uh, did you meet Katie Holmes? Or was she not in that scene? Yeah, I did. Uh, I met her briefly. She actually drove my daughter around in a golf cart because my daughter was like three or four when we filmed it, and she was being three or four and they were like all right she's cute but she's being too loud get her out of the studio and katie holmes drove her around the the set on a golf cart so that's pretty cool yeah did uh, how about michelle williams she's a very famous now you know i think only people i even knew at, at the time was katie holmes like you know i like dawson's creek i was aware of the show but i didn't watch it uh i think i was just so busy and like i watched 90210 i watched melrose place i i would have watched dawson's creek i just think i got busy with with life and i was touring and it just wasn't on my radar as much so i didn't really know much of the the people on that show i uh, i watched it there was a time in the late 90s where i got this thing called epstein Barr virus which is chronic fatigue and it knocks you out for like two years about a year and a half i was almost bedridden Oh, and wow. so I watched a lot of TV, and Dawson's Creek was one of the shows I watched. I was way too old for it, but that didn't uh, stop me. Uh, Kevin Williamson is the creator of that show, and he wrote Scream, and he mm -hmm. wrote, I know he did last summer. He's writing or he's involved in the new Scream movie. They're trying to uh, reinvent it with him. And uh, so he, there was a lot of good nods to, to horror in that. There's a really good horror ep Halloween episode. And uh, those guys all kind of had uh, a good idea. Uh, Dawson's Creek, though, for me, falls apart by the time you get there. Uh, uh, 
it, it started right. jumping, jumping the proverbial uh, shark. But for those who don't know what I'm talking about, Dawson's Creek was this show with this James Vanderbeek. This kid lived in North Carolina and he on a, on a creek and people, mm-hmm. uh, Katie Holmes would climb in his window. But but the murder dolls were on the show. <laughs> so strange. And when I interviewed yeah. them, that was yeah, the most was, fascinating thing to me. It was it was cool because, like I said, the uh, I guess the director who you're talking about was a fan, and he hit us, he hit our manager up, and they asked us to be on the show. And uh, apparently, it was a big deal to him because they used four or five of our songs in that episode to the point where because there was so much profanity in our songs, they had edited all the profanity out. So when you hear like one of the songs, it's so cut. Like if you didn't, if if you don't know the song, you don't know what's going on, but like it's, they purposely cut the language out of it and use it. Like they could have easily just not used the song. Uh, And I remember getting my first kind of ASCAP check and saw, uh, you know, like money from Dawson's Creek. I couldn't believe it. And I just checked my... I just checked my ASCAP last week and saw Dawson's Creek again. So it's still, to this day, uh, pain. It's crazy. Yeah, you answered my question. Yeah, the gift that keeps me giving. Uh, I love to say truck. Uh, Yeah, uh, yeah. But but yeah, it's it's very funny. And one of the things was that when they researched it, uh, they were instructed to concentrate on the main members of the Murder Dolls, which was you and uh, 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 Joey (laughs) Joey Jordison. I mean, no disrespect to anyone else who'd been in that band. But the mm-hmm. core of the lineup were the two of you, the only two who were throughout. Uh, uh, but so they probably thought what I thought, that Joey Jordison is the drummer. Yeah. Um, so they concentrated on the drummer, who was Ben Graves, because in the Murder Dolls, Joey played guitar. Yeah. And uh, so, but you, we see plenty of you, and I just think it's the funniest thing. I was yes. going to say about Michelle Williams, we were talking mm-hmm. about Bush. There was a play in New York City called Killer Joe. It's, it's a movie, too. I didn't see the movie, but the play was great. Off, off Broadway, downtown. I went to see it, and the cast was Lori Petty, which is mm-hmm. Tank Girl, and she's fully nude throughout the show. And Scott Glenn was in it. It was legendary. Scott Glenn, I know. Scott, Scott Glenn's excellent movies. He was a uh, urban cowboy. Wow, yeah, you picked a good one. I was thinking of later ones like Silverado or... Mm-hmm. Um, he drinks Back the worm left. in Urban Cowboy. He he uh he was he's pretty scary. He's terrifying in that movie. He's a real he's believable. He was like that in the character at this play as well. But mm-hmm. so right before intermission, Michelle Williams takes off all of her clothes, and the lights start to go down, and she had a bush, uh, not, not like a not like a bush that would knock your Aunt Connie socks off, but a bush nonetheless. And right. then I was like, oh my god, you know. And I knew that it happened in the show. And I was with mm-hmm. my girlfriend at the time. And I'm like, now, how do I not like crane my neck or look awkward or, you know, like do that? So I try to be mature. You know, I was young. If I had the money I had now, I'd probably go back every day. Uh, yeah. and, and before that, before Michelle Williams uh, was showing it, uh, Faruza Balk was in it uh, uh, doing the same. And so I think... I could have spent, you know, eight shows a week looking at Fruza Balk's bush. I mean, I don't know if you think like have, I do, but I mean. That could have been good. Thing. Yeah, because, yeah, that was probably before she, not that she doesn't look as, as great as she as she used to. Um, but probably back then, that was probably some some uh, some good viewing. It was right after the craft, if that oh, means anything. perfect, perfect. Yeah. And, and Michelle Williams was still on. Uh, Dawson's Creek. I mean, this is going back. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, only in New York City could you just go out for a night uh, a theater and see famous uh, a Bush. Uh, uh, I'm yeah. going to be appealing. I'm going to be appealing this one tonight. Um, although there should be nothing wrong with uh, 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 Bush. A lot of people saying nice words about Bush is, a, and it's also a great that when we when we use that term, most people to probably may know or may not. That's from Revenge of the Nerds when mm-hmm. Booger you know, claims we've got Bush. It's a great mm-hmm. moment. So one of my, my artists that I use for all my t-shirts and album covers, his name's Johnny Bush. So every time I see him on a chat when I'm doing my Patreon stuff, I always say, we've got Bush. Mm-hmm. We've got Bush. When I started working in the film industry for Troma, the makers of the Toxic Avenger, 
we would go to this thing called the American Film Market, AFM. It was in Santa Monica, the Santa Monica Lowe's Hotel. And but the what they would do is all the hotel rooms would turn into offices where you buy and sell movies. And mm-hmm. um, and so it was an interesting experience. And you would go see movies all day long. I would go. I, went, I saw Rumble in the Bronx when it was a test screening, Jackie Chan movie filmed in Canada. Nothing looked like the Bronx. I saw The Basketball Diaries, which is a great movie. Uh, Mark Wahlberg is so good in it. It's his first movie. And, and Leonardo DiCaprio was actually very good. It's a great story. Uh, dark themes. But uh, so at this American film market, I met Ogre in the lobby. All the kind of actors would hang out in the lobby trying to get a pass to go up to the rooms. So I would meet all my favorite celebrities and go, well, I can get you in. Come on. You know, so in one day I met the late Luke Perry. I met um, Hulk Hogan, Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds and Bloodsport. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, well, the same year, I, I worked on a movie called Tromeo and Juliet, and I got Lemmy in the movie. And they agreed that Lemmy would come and help us promote it. We wasn't even out yet. And uh, so everyone was nervous about Lemmy showing up. And his assistant at the time, Alex Guerrero, uh, uh, who worked for his manager, Todd Singerman, he said, look, I'm going to drop Lemmy off, and then you're responsible for him. you got to bring him home at the end of the night. You know, Lemmy did not drive, as, as I don't. Right. And, um, so earlier that day, I go into this office, and David Carradine is there. Uh-huh. Uh, Kane, yeah, from Kung Fu. Uh-huh. And I told, I start talking to him, and he is sitting on a couch, kind of reclining, and I'm standing up, and I'm telling him about what Kung Fu meant to me, and that I studied it when I was a kid, and the things that I was a fan of, and I was talking about how Brandon Lee was on uh, a, in a Kung Fu movie in 1986. And he was really fascinated. And all of a sudden, he lifted his foot slowly, very slowly, and he tapped me on the uh, genitals. Uh, 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 like, like not, I mean, he just kind of went, and I went. Like a karate foot tap? Yeah, I think he, oh. and then I, I, I said, was I supposed to block that or something? Like I, I didn't know that <laughs> I was sparring with an 80-year-old man. Um, but it was fascinating. And my friend reminded me these other days, so you got to tell people about how, Kwai Chen Kane kicked you in the nuts. Uh, but so Lemmy got there and he wanted to meet Kwai Chen Kane, of course. And we did. And I spent the entire day with uh, uh, Lemmy and then went back to his his house, uh, his apartment, uh, right across from the rainbow. And you, you, I just told like at once, but the point was Revenge of the Nerds. Meeting him was so cool. And actually, you'll, you're the only person who will get this. The office next to Troma there was a director there, and his name was Conrad Janis. He was Mindy McConnell's father on Mork and Mindy. Do you remember that? Oh, wow. Bald guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, Weird. Okay, so I, I gave you guys – when, when me and Wednesday get together, it's like pop culture um, overload. 250 people watching uh, now. Um, let's see. David Carradine, another another great Chuck Norris movie. People need to, if they don't, you know, it's it's weird. I think Chuck Norris, like, almost like the Chuck Norris jokes, almost like became bigger than any Chuck Norris movie ever. Uh, people just good. people just talk about like, oh, Chuck Norris, like like they don't even know like most people can't even name a Chuck Norris movie, but like one of the greatest ones, which is why Walker Texas Ranger is such a disappointment to me, is yep. that his Lawrence McQuaid. He's like a real Texas Ranger. He's a badass in that movie. And he fights David Carradine in it, which is some of the best TV for me. In my book. It's incredible. Lone Wolf McQuaid is one of the best of all those oh, movies. Yeah, it's, it's, really old ones are good, too. Lone Wolf McQuaid's a little later. but uh, um, and, and some of them dealt with sort of supernatural themes. Chuck Norris movies were pretty nuts. Yeah. yeah. I was watching uh, uh, something today, and I was thinking about... Oh, I was watching first blood part two today and i love first blood that's my favorite of the rambo movies first first blood's my favorite but i was watching part two it was on pluto been on all week and i'm watching it and part two is not as good as it used to be to me when i was a kid Mm -hmm. but as i've gotten older i'm like what is the best vietnam action movie and i'm saying platoon because those are like the real kind of movies but i think missing an action too from for me Chuck Norris, that might be a better movie than Rambo, as far you as know, the war 
Yeah, I, it's 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 an excellent movie. I loved it when I was a kid, and maybe I've got to go back and uh, and, and review. Uh, I, I sometimes I see stuff here. I'm not sure I'm going to play along, but why not? M has been asking over and over for Wednesday to give her a new name. Now I don't okay. know if there's anything that Wednesday does. I don't know if he's a namer. What, what do you want to What do you want to be called Wednesday? Can you give you a new name? Well, your name is M, so that's not very. That's just you're not giving him much. M, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where you're from? Yeah, uh, give me some. Give me you? something like. Give me. What do you like? What do you name, like? Name five one. things you like, and I can give you a name. Yeah, this is a new uh, new theme here uh, uh -huh. that will we'll, I'm sure is going to uh, take the world. Uh, right. I see someone says eye for an eye, the octagon, something. The octagon, stuff, great. Yeah. Force of one. Uh, the uh, uh, for, forced vengeance is, is is another reason why I wear hats. Uh, mm -hmm. Chuck Norris wore a hat in that movie, and everyone every time someone fucked with his hat, he usually kicked them or killed them. Usually, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. Those, those Chuck Norris movies are great, and uh, uh, and you want to go all the way back, Return of the Dragon. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's a different thing, but okay. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with stuff. Questions like Wednesday Patreon. That stuff, email his website or wherever you sign up. Wednesday yeah. can't deal with all these things. He's got uh, Chuck Norris movies to watch. Yeah, I got but, Chuck Norris stuff to talk about. Write his, uh, uh, Jason, answer magenta, please. It's serious. Hey, hey, hey listen, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm starting yelling at the kids. You damn kids, uh, uh, write to his website and he has people. <laughs> Wednesday has a whole team. He, yeah. comes here, he comes here to tell dick jokes with me and reminisce about the old days. This is not the place to announce. Uh, 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 I'm reading everyone's questions at once. And where are you? Everyone's so excited to, uh, to, to, to for your new name. Uh, apparently, this is something uh -huh. Wednesday does. And then I got to get ready for uh, 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 Utah. I'm glad that so many people stayed here. I thought some people might be scared off by how ridiculous uh, uh, the chat was. Most people watch this. Oh, well, and we asked you for a lot of information. The only thing you gave us. Yes. Is, uh, oh, that's not you love, you love cats and I Wednesday cats, 13. Too. I mean, I love cats and Wednesday 13, too. But I mean, I don't know if that's going to help with a name. And give us a little bit more to go on. What part yeah. of the world uh, uh, do you live in? And yes, Bruce Lee did rip off Chuck Norris' chest hair. <laughs> That's true. What's my opinion on the Saw movies? I saw them. How about see what I did there? Da, da, did da. you? Uh, uh, you know, I haven't saw uh, uh, <laughs> all of them. I don't yeah. really like that stuff. Not for me. Yeah, I, I saw the first and second one. I, I I've seen a couple of them. I I never I haven't watched them past that. They were okay. I just kept going when I was watching. I'm like, nobody uses these cassettes anymore. This is not accurate. No one uses cassettes anymore. Mm -hmm. Like this would just like, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, there wasn't yeah. uh, for me. Everyone wants to see Wednesday's cat, but as you know, cats sleep a lot, and the cat yeah. shows up. Yeah. Oh, I, yes. I meant to show you this. I I bought a new toy the other day. I I finally got the Motel oh, Hell figure. Motel Hell, yeah. yeah. Hold on. Uh, the packaging's not that great on it, I don't think. So I'm I'm definitely going to open this one. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's uh, another it. great another great character, Farmer Vincent with the. Uh, yeah, I was going to order this online. I was talking to my friend. I was like, he's like, hey, did you get that Motel Hell figure yet? And I was like, no, I saw it online. I was like, but there's a store here in Burbank that probably has it. And I went to the store and they had it. Nice. That's so, perfect. Yeah, I love yeah. that. That image was definitely in my head as a young person. Uh, Fangoria yeah. magazine, whoever. Even before I saw the movie, I knew the image. Like, the pig's got a chainsaw? You know what? Didn't. If I'm not mistaken, we'd have to ask Stevie Rochelle for this. Was it there like a Metal Edge magazine that was like a Mad, like Mad magazine? They made like a little parody and they made something called Metal Sludge. And it had that picture of that Farmer Vincent as the pig. And I think that's where Stevie got the title Metal Sludge from. I don't think he's watching tonight, but yeah. Is that, a, is that something in my brain is telling me I heard this because 
he got the title from like a parody that somebody did somewhere. I don't remember what that was. Uh, I'm definitely going to, uh, I'll definitely ask him. I talk to him quite often and uh, he tries to play matchmaker with other people Wednesday, but it's not the same, you know? No, no, he, he serendipity. He, uh, he, he, he was like, uh, what's the, the Cupid. He Cupided us. Yes. He, yeah. he, uh, he knew and he was correct. <laughs> Some of his questions make me laugh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I wish I could just do like an ex expose interview and just just blurt everything out, but that's not farmer. Farmer Vincent went to. Do you like Vinny Vincent? I mean, they're pretty different, but not really. I think he's a better guitar player than Vinny. Oh, Vincent. please! <laughs> yeah. You know, I was I was listening to those Vinny Vincent records not that long ago, and I just couldn't believe if you listen to that first album and hear how many solos. That dude's doing over the lead vocals. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's amazing how they like, dive bomb, <laughs> just full on vocals going on. It's like, yeah. I see members of the Vinnie Vincent Invasion quite often in my life, which is Dana Strum and then later Mark uh, Slaughter. But I see them quite a bit. They have great Vinnie Vincent stories, and they're always happy to tell them. There's a story about. Uh, I don't tell it that well, but Dana told me, and uh, it's something along the lines of the Kiss fans know it. They were at catering, and Vinnie Vincent tried some of the soup, and he didn't like the soup, so he threw it back into the pot <laughs> at lunch. Oh. Um, all right. And so we're going to wrap up in just a little bit. We stayed longer, but uh, th there's questions about what do I think, what do we think of something called. I don't even know what that means. Do you do you know what Taylor is asking about? Skibbity skibbity do to toilet. What? Yeah. Are you familiar? About a, a du dubay? Is that what those things are called? Where you the water you spray? Oh, your well, she, well, she. I believe it's a she. Says, what yes. do you think of Fortnite? And, and so I think it's games. I don't play uh -huh. those games. Wednesday and I, I are still yeah. playing the game of life in Candyland. That's not fun. Fortnite. I don't know. The game of life was a bunch of bullshit, you know. Um, yeah. Nothing. It, what about get knocked up, get an abortion, uh, re refinance your house, lose your you you know, lose your family, uh, uh, become homeless, smoke crack. Well, those are, that's life. That should be know? a game that's called real life. Real life. We should market real that. life. Yeah, we should market that. Uh, all right. Uh, um, no, someone says saying. Bobby Rock hates Vinnie Vincent. So yeah, you got Bobby yeah. Rock who plays with Lita Ford. So you almost have Vinnie Vincent invasion. They're still out there just without Vinnie Vincent. They that is true. That is true. Uh, uh, the other night, uh, Michelle texted me. I might have told the story last week, but she found uh, she's on those Pinterests or Reddits or subreddits. I, I don't really Tumblr. I don't know, but somebody mm -hmm. had a picture of Wednesday in drag. And and he wasn't bad. He wasn't bad looking. Thank you. And, uh, uh, and but so somebody asking, would you bring Frankenstein drag queens to Australia? I think that's done. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, of all places, it would probably work there because people wouldn't actually know it a little better than here. Uh, no, I mean, I think the closest you'd get is just me playing those songs, which is kind of what I do anyway. That's kind of what the Murder Dolls record is. Is those songs uh but no the the whole drag queen thing got got ruined uh it's not even fun anymore for me it's um, too heavy everyone's doing it it's and and when people hear the word drag queen they instantly think of or is rupaul kind of stuff and for me it wasn't like that like the whole drag queen thing was twisted sister jane yeah, county that was where my influence came from and was and we were you know, out to look hideous, to look like the, you know, like Twisted Sister looked. They knew they looked terrible. And that was kind of our thing. Uh, uh, although I didn't look that bad in drag. I went through many phases. I'm not sure which picture you saw. I went through a pretty phase and then I went through a pretty ugly phase. So I there's a little, was, bit, I little bit of both. I, would, I think I would call it pretty. All right. Uh, Mandy would like to see some rapid fire questions. So I, we're ready. We're going to give brief answers rapid. to questions. So we, let's do it. Go fast. Uh, I'll try to pick things that don't seem too stupid. Uh, uh, 
I'll give you guys a second to get them ready, but uh, <laughs> rapid fire. Say, Wasn't that a Brandon Lee movie? Of course, yeah. Powers Booth, Brandon Lee, and uh, it's, it's good. It's stupid, but it's it, uh, great martial arts in that movie. It's probably the most of Brandon Lee that you get to see, uh, especially for martial arts. Uh, okay, uh, uh, would you go on tour with dopes? Uh, would you travel with a bunch of dopes? Oh, no. dope. Oh, sorry. No. No. no, we've already toured with them. Been there, yeah. done that. I think they're playing at that Vegas thing. Am I wrong? Is that right? Uh, probably. There's like 95 bands on that. If they didn't play last year, they probably played this year. So that's, <laughs> there's going to be. Yeah, so I, I, they're probably on it, yes. There's going to be so many dopes there. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, we think Wednesday is very pretty. That's a statement, not a question. Where's Scream? We've heard it 10,000 times. Did the cat sleep? Is, she's sleeping somewhere. She was fed before that. And uh, yeah, she's. She's sleeping somewhere. She's not in here. How, she's sleeping. How tall is Wednesday? I am almost six foot tall. I'm like five eleven and a half. I'm not. What, what does what does Wikipedia say I am? You were saying something about that one day. I think they say you're six feet. Uh, I, I yeah. He, he he's taller than Joey Jordison. I'll tell you that. Much. Yes, I'm right. I'm almost six foot. Like, but if I wear my shoes and I wear this hat, I I look a little taller. It helps. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's get some more questions. Uh, uh, what is your favorite band right now? Favorite band right now? Uh, I don't have a like a new band. There's nobody new that's favorite bands. Kiss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that new band like Kiss. Kiss. Yeah, there's this band called the Ramones that's coming out. I'm, I'm looking yes. Uh, oh, Michelle's here. Thank goodness. Uh, and Michelle, we're going to see uh, uh, Wednesday perform the music of the Murder Dolls at the Sick New World festival yes. so make sure you you start packing uh it's going to be fantastic uh okay favorite gi joe figure uh zartan he's my favorite he comes with the, the removable mask and the mask he looks like jesus which i always thought was weird and bizarre and he changed and he, he changes colors you put him in the sun he turns blue how Why weird is he, that i think he makes a uh, uh, rice also that could be right. yes <laughs> uh wednesday have you heard of the band jesus lizard Yes, but they're not new. That's an old band. All right, but so he knows. Uh, are you going to go see the Omen movie? No, I guess no, no. I did watch the the original Omen recently, and that scene with the head being cut off with the glass pane is <laughs> it's a gift that keeps on giving. In Search of Darkness, did you watch it, and did you like it? Uh, you know, is that the uh, the the horror DVD things? Those are excellent. They're so long, but they're they're great. Like, yeah, I actually have that set out to watch again because it was uh, it's entertaining and it brings a billion ideas and movies that you haven't thought about. And it's always good for me when I'm writing songs. I like to watch those uh, those kind of documentaries. They bring up good ideas and good song titles for me. Who wrote "Welcome to the Strange"? Love that song. I wrote all three versions of it. Nice. Uh, I'm trying to get to some of these questions. Some of them I'm skipping. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Paul Shertino would like to know where he can sell his Degrassi Junior High memorabilia. <laughs> <And> <laughs> only Wednesday, and I probably know what that is. But. <laughs> Degrassi, it goes there. That was their slogan. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, later, Drake would appear on that show. It's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what do I think about LeBron James? Is that the guy that that crashed in the helicopter, or is that no, the other? Guy? That's, that's Kobe Bryant. LeBron James. Oh, right? LeBron James is the guy that has the sprites. He's the sprite endorsement, right? And he has his own Hubba Bubba or Bubblicious gum or something. What yeah. Hubba yeah. Bubba? That, those old Hubba Bubba commercials are the best, where they would have the the gum fights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hubba Bubba. Did you? When when we do this, I mean, I literally wake up right before we record these things, yeah. and, and all I know is like, I'm gonna ask Wednesday if he'll eat shark meat. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> never do I know that it's gonna get into a uh, uh, hubba bubba. Hubba uh, bubba gum fight. We need to have one of those official, like set yes, it up at Universal agree. Studios at like six o'clock. We're gonna have a gum fight. It's like a uh, on the Wild yeah, West like those dance squads. What y'all's thought, apparently uh, Sam might be from North Carolina also, what y'all's <laughs> thoughts on Slipknot retiring the mask? I don't know is if that, that means. Is, did someone say they were doing that? I don't think that's 
that's real. I would be that would be dumb. I'd be like, hey, Michael Myers is going to retire the mask on the next movie. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. I don't think they're retiring the mask. Yeah, that's stupid. Do you know what time he's playing in Vegas? He does not know yet. Probably early, probably around noon. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was looking at this slide. I know we are on the spiral stage, uh, which is a awesome stage. I looked at what was on that last year. I think uh, Ministry was on that stage last year. Uh, a lot of the... So I don't know how they're doing it this year. I think they've even added a stage. So there's a lot of bands. I don't know what time. I mean, it's a chance we'll be on early. It's also a chance we could play at three or four o'clock. I have no idea. Um, Get there and spend the uh, prepare. They're paying spend. us. They're paying us decent. I don't think they're paying us the price of a of a twelve o'clock band. But I could be wrong. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Well, it's going to be fun, and we're looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward. We're going to document. So you can see some, a lot of people are asking about collection videos and uh, uh, myself and Wednesday, probably it's a lot of work. Sean Clark does these amazing collection videos where he shows his memorabilia. They're great. Oh yeah. Wednesday's talking about doing a, a YouTube that'll have some more interactive sort of content on it. And I think maybe when he gets, look, he's, he's busy, but what I think when he gets to that, maybe he'll start showing some stuff. And maybe on this show, occasionally we could pick a, a genre to show. The problem is, you, if we just said, here's the collection, you'd be here forever, and it's also yeah. all over the place. I mean, you know, having maybe, a slide maybe next stuff. week we can, uh, maybe next week I can go into my G.I. Joe room because that's more themed into one thing, and I could just kind of stick with everything scattered in here. It's like that, it's everything random, Ghostbusters to Texas Chainsaw Massacre here. Yeah, I mean, there's so much nonsense behind me right now that, yeah, I wouldn't even know where to start. Uh, okay, somebody's. I'm, I'm trying to pick sh short questions. Uh, oh, you before. know what? We uh, not that we're going to get on that again, but like I texted you last week, as soon as we were done with the the MFK question we had last last week, we picked mm -hmm. the Heather's, and I wrote you the following day and was like, we left out the the most famous Heather, Heather O'Rourke from like Carol Ann, but that probably wouldn't have been a good one to do any of those two. So, <laughs> so. For the most part, I, I, I think that people who watch think, oh, boy, that Wednesday has got to be crazy. I mean, he's singing about uh, death and, and running people over and doing it again. And yeah. uh, and then when you know him, he's pretty, uh, you know, I don't want to ruin the mystique, but you're a pretty normal guy. But every now and then he will say something a little off uh, the beaten path, which oh, was yeah. when you really think of Heather's, he suggested <laughs> Heather O'Rourke, who was a girl who probably passed away uh, at 12. Yes, She's yeah. saying they're here uh, and they're back. Uh, she was also Fonzie's stepdaughter. Uh, if, uh, this is true. This is true. She is buried. Wednesday, do you do you like going to cemeteries? Are you interested in that? I, um, I don't want to ruin the, I, I, If you want to go up next time you're out here, I'll go back to it. I've been out to Heather O'Rourke's grave and also yeah. right probably not even 100 feet from her is Barney Fife, uh, Don Knott's grave. Mm -hmm. uh which is pretty cool because it's a huge like plaque like in the ground that has a big picture of him uh, all his parts. it has like a, a it has a little com uh compilation of things he did yeah uh yeah it's super cool so i'm I'm down to go back to that again we should go that cemetery is called uh, westwood mm -hmm. and uh the most famous person there is marilyn monroe um but there's a lot of people there wednesday that i bet you don't even know are there it, that cemetery is small, and what's strange is it's in the middle of a city, basically. It's yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's weird. I went, I went there once during during the sea days, and uh, and went and did like a little uh, video thing for the for Carol Ann's grave and Barney Fife. And uh, since then, uh, they've put the Ted Knight uh, uh, memorial thing out. Since then, too, I think yeah, at the yeah. Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and there's a Burt Reynolds statue as well. So. Yeah. I visited, Definitely need to go check these things out. I visited uh, the, the Burt Reynolds, but that uh, uh, Westwood uh, Pierce Brothers Cemetery where Marilyn Monroe is, you know, people, uh, they die all the time. And that cemetery every day has a new celebrity, but it's everything is a stone's throw. But I will tell you on the poltergeist vibe, a lot of people don't know this, that not that far from Heather O'Rourke is also Dominique Dunn, um, the uh, older sister in the poltergeist movies who sadly was murdered and uh, really a terrible story and uh, definitely a testament of why our legal system sucks. 
because uh, this, this man strangled her, her boyfriend strangled her in front of her house for quite a bit of time and, uh, and did very little jail time and was cooking in Hollywood, in L.A. He was working in a restaurant. Um, people figured it out and ran him out of town, which I think is great. I think it's great that people stand up. He really was a creep. Uh, you know, imagine strangling this beautiful young person. Uh, uh, anyway, but so I hate to be negative, but she's buried there as well. And then not too far from her is uh, another sad story. But Dorothy Stratton, which is star 80, uh, uh, Meryl Hemingway played her in the movie. She got breast implants uh, to play that part. Uh, Eric Roberts played the killer, uh, but she's buried there. And then on a happier note, right to the left of that is uh, Magilla Gorilla, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't wow. sound like he's real. McGilla Gorilla, who was <laughs> who was also <laughs> Sam the Butcher on the Brady Bunch, Alan Melvin. Really? He, mm, yep. <laughs> he's I'm, a huge part of Andy Griffith, that guy. Oh, he's, was he? Alan Melvin, he has yeah. about four or five different characters in Andy Griffith that are surpass the butcher in uh um to me, because he's the guy that that uh Barney Fife has to fight in one episode, uh, and Barney Fife hires or Andy hires this um, this kung fu guy to beat him up in the dark. It's an excellent episode. I gotta look it up. I, I remember. That's yeah, he yeah. he plays a couple different episodes. He plays a couple different guys. He's a guy that has to fight Barney. He's a guy that uh, uh, sells Barney a bad car. He's always a, a, a thug on those shows. Yeah, Alan Melvin. Well, he is yeah, buried. Melvin. He's buried next to somebody that might be considered one of the most beautiful women of all time. She's certainly one of the most photographed and painted, and uh, that would be Betty Page. Betty yeah. Page is buried next to McGilla Gorilla. Wow. Uh, McGilla Betty Gorilla or Grape Ape is the question. Yeah, I say, I want to have to go for Grape Ape. I like Grape Ape. That's tough. Grape Ape is pretty good. What about Jabberjaw? Uh, oh, Jabberjaw. He's the craziest shark you ever saw. A hundred percent. I mean, that says um, the theme song. If you go to the left of that, Frank Zappa is buried there in an unmarked grave. And his body is the only body facing a different direction. Everyone else faces north or whatever. He faces south. Uh, Roy Orbison, also in an unmarked grave, not too far from there. One of my wow, TV there's icons. A lot of, there's a lot of people, a lot of famous people there. That's crazy. One of my TV icons, Jack. Klugman, uh, Oscar Madison, and Quincy uh, buried there. there. Uh, members of the Beach Boys, uh, the Wilson, uh, Wilson, Carl Wilson, or whoever's dead. <laughs> Somebody there. says Captain Caveman is buried there. I don't know who the voice of Captain Caveman <laughs> is. That had to be Dr. Paul or somebody. Captain Caveman is another way I can always, whenever I'm checking my vocals, sometimes I do that uh, on the microphone to make sure my my voice is in good shape. If I can mm -hmm. do the, if I can belt out the Captain Caveman, I'm doing pretty good. Lisa had a Jabberjaw lunchbox. Lisa is a age appropriate, I would think. Although Splenda uh, or uh, sweet and low, uh, Splenda. I'm I'm currently doing this new uh, instant mocha coffee that's got some Splenda in it, which I'm happy with. I do uh, a, a Splenda as well. I'm diabetic, so I like a Splenda. But also uh, in that cemetery uh, next to Marilyn Monroe, of course, is Hugh Hefner. Um, and then to the left of them, uh, really an icon that no one talks about being there, Buddy Rich, uh, one of the most famous drummers of all time. He's buried there. Um, uh, uh, Rodney Dangerfield uh, uh, buried there. So Wednesday, we could go there and just walk around and discover. Yeah, that's, yeah, right? that's all the people you name right there. Is a, that's a whole other whole other thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we will do that uh, and show it to you. The other cemetery that we have to go see, and we've teased this for a while, is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, uh, Cemetery, which was located near near the barbecue that we're going to experience. Yeah. Um, uh, why unmarked graves? Some people don't want to be. Uh, they, I think Frank Zappa liked being weird, and some people didn't want to be. They didn't want to have a shrine, and Frank Zappa was probably a little different, and that's how he he did it. Um, I think he likes having a little mystique that people were always trying to find it. Hong Kong Fui, one of my favorites. He was the number one super guy. He is a uh, number one super guy. He was a dog mm -hmm. uh, who knew Kung Fu, and he had a cat as a sidekick. 
And, and he kind of he kind of talked like who did he talk like? He kind of talked like this. He's kind of who was his voice? I'm trying to think. Well, he, he, he was in one of the most famous horror movies of all time from 1980, The Shining. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Scatman Crothers. Scatman yeah, Crothers. We could there go on are. password. Answer my own know. question. Look at that. Me and you could go on password for like bizarre trivia. Um, yeah. I've talked about doing a, a thing on the show where we'll do like a slumber party where everyone can stay and we'll watch a movie uh, like the Toxic Avenger. I was thinking would be the first one. So we can do some more interactive uh, things. Uh, 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 someone wants to know why my arms are blue. It's because I have a blue light over here. I can change it to uh, to red. You know, I don't uh, I don't know, like I don't pay attention to people's details. The other day I was going to ask Wednesday, you got any tattoos? And then, and then I saw this picture of him online, and he's covered in tattoos. I don't have yeah. any, but uh, it's it, it's interesting. Wednesday, you have many different uh, sides of your uh, life. Uh, yeah, you know it's weird though. Like my tattoo days are behind me. Like my last tattoo was two thousand nine. Um, I started getting tattooed when I was eighteen. I think I was the first kid in my school to come to school with a tattoo and look like a thug. Um, but they hurt. I'm not a pain guy. Um, and I got some cool stuff. Um, uh, luckily I got some good artwork and most of it is horror movie TV stuff. Uh, I like to talk about tattoos and the idea of like, Oh yeah, I'm going to get this one day and I'm going to get a back piece with the different strokes cast. You know, the idea is fun, but I don't think I'm going to do it. You, there's a funny side of you also like, you started drinking coffee at 40 or whatever. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's it's bizarre. <laughs> Going to try shark meat for the first time. Uh, <laughs> question is, how old do I have to be to go to your concert? Well, it depends on the venue. I believe that Sick New World is probably an all-ages thing. Uh, but it yeah, but it's sold out. It's, it's, it sold out the day it went on sale. I mean, they put every huge band that's on tour at that one festival. So, it's of course, it's sold out. Mm-hmm. Jack Skellington is going to be there. Uh, Danny Elfman. <laughs> Someone uh, says I look... Wednesday, you look sad. Why do I look... What? <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that. It's these goth kids. They. Uh, you know, it's, it's so funny because I've been, you know, like every time I come home or go visit my, my parents or take pictures, you know, every time I take a picture with someone, I always go into that mode of taking a picture after a show. And everyone's like, oh, you always look so sad. Don't do that. You look like you're upset. I'm like, this is just this is what I do. I'm not I made upset. a rule. I made a rule when I did photo shoots for my band. I would tell the band, nobody touch each other. It looks stupid. Don't hang on each other. Everybody yeah. keep your hands to yourself. The Ramones invented this rule. I didn't invent it. Johnny and Ramone told me though. Nobody mm. touch each other. We don't have to smile. And when I, we would do photo shoots for my band or bands I work with, the photographers would always say, now let's do a wild one. I would say, no, it's okay. And they would kind of get mad. I'd go, no, no, uh, you all jump in the air. I go, I'm not going to use that. Why are you wasting my time? It's, it's not going to happen. It, then, yeah. Now, Wednesday, there's people in the chat that I don't know if, if this is the actual person or the people you know here. I recognize a couple of people uh, from, the, from my fan club. Uh, well, I like this one, one guy who just said Conrad Bain tattoo is gangsta. <laughs> that was well, the Mr. Trumpet tattoo would be amazing. There's one person that we mutually know, but I couldn't imagine she would want to be involved in this nonsense. Yes. Um, uh, afterwards. Um, oh, the bicycle shop on different strokes. That's a whole, what a weird episode that was. Ugh. We had a long discussion about that on the show. Dr. Paul goes back with the show. Yeah. Oh, and that's dude. crazy because that guy was the he's the head guy from WKRP. It's hard to like it. I, I feel he got shafted, but one episode of, of Different Strokes kind of ruined his whole WKRP appeal. It's like he, you don't, you original, don't trust him. He was the original Maytag man. Uh, he was that's right. That's and right. Then he was M Mr. Carlson. <laughs> oh. There's nights. There's nights where I think I have dementia and it's over for me. I think I won't remember anything. And then I sit here with you. And I talk Here's about a trivia. Oh. Here's a trivia. What did he go on to after? After that, he went on to be a grandfather on what TV show? Oh, now that's good. I don't know if I know this. I, I mean, just remember. I, I, I feel like pains. growing pains. Okay, I would have. I would have got that wrong. I was going to say just the ten of us or something. He um, was. He was 
uh, Jason Seaver's father. I believe he uh, he had to give Mike a couple of good talking tos. He, um, he, yeah, he uh, he tried to molest Dudley though. He tried to get Dudley into the bathtub and take inappropriate pictures of Dudley, who would later go on to fight Jason Voorhees in Friday the Thirteenth Five. I think uh, Dudley did. But Dudley. You know, Dudley. But Dudley is a priest or a minister or a pastor in Hollywood. We should go see him sometime. We should, we should track Dudley down and go to dinner with him. Mm -hmm. He could probably help us. With because if you, because the, the question I want to ask is be like, hey, what was it really like when you guys had that guest episode where Michael Knight from Knight Rider came in and you guys almost got blown up in that car? T take me back there, Dudley. Tell me about yeah. that. You're right. Well, if I can get Dudley on the show, uh, you will come with me. We'll, we'll ask yeah. him. I was filmed at Universal Studios Hollywood, which is that was a crazy episode. Like I remember episode. the cliffhanger. We thought Arnold might get blown up on that commercial. We're like, you got to yeah. tune in Saturday to find out what happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, but he wanted to take inappropriate pictures. Speaking of inappropriate, Ron Jeremy is here. Uh, nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Just on cue, that was like Letty and Squiggy. He just opened the door. Um, but uh, uh, th there was a game that he was trying to play with Dudley in the bathtub. And if anyone could think of the name, it'd be great. But it was some, <laughs> I can't remember, but it was some game like Battleship or something, but it was in the tub and uh, uh, he got a shirtless <laughs> Oh, that's so messed up. He got a shirtless Dudley, but thank God, uh, if Woody had only gone to the police, none of this would have ever happened. Uh, I know you know that line. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but Mr. Drummond kicked down the door. I don't think that's how it happened, but it's fun to say it. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. Uh, Arnold Jackson did know better. Arnold Jackson said, what you talking about, Mr. WKRP? <laughs> what you talking about, Mr. Lawson? You ain't touching my nether regions. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, 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 M is asking the same question about the age. I answered it already in 50 different yeah. ways. I don't make the ages for my shows. If I would let everybody in if they could let them in, but sometimes it's usually it's usually all ages for my shows, but sometimes it's 18 and up. Some countries like Australia, I think it's always 18 and up there. Uh, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't make the rules, I can't let people in. Yeah. Jason is here. Jason, you did a great job. Jason co-hosted last night, and uh, he was in Ohio gearing up for tornadoes. He survived, but he did uh, stay and give us a correspondence. And then Johnny Monaco showed up and brought us home to meet his mother. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, that was exciting. I was, I was, that was a good episode. I liked, I, I enjoyed watching Johnny on his treadmill. That for some reason that was kind of enjoyable for me because I'm on my treadmill every day, and I'm like. I'm watching someone else on a treadmill. This is bizarre. I'm ordering a treadmill. And uh, uh, and I think maybe we'll do a show where everyone is on their I am on my treadmill all day long. Like I said, I, every day, every day I get up, I get up around 6 o'clock every day. And I do 10,000 steps by 10 o'clock every day on my treadmill. You get up early. My schedule is never the same, depending on what I have to do. Wednesday, he'll text me early, and I'll text him late. And then eventually we meet somewhere in the uh in the middle uh okay yeah i think uh i i think m is like very young okay so you're gonna have to wait to a show uh uh when i was a kid you could bring your birth certificate and the security would let you in and everyone i knew faked their birth certificate because you know just xerox and yeah white on it. you know i'm and, trying to think the first the first club i went into i went to see tough play and i don't think they carded us i got in for i got in i was 15 to see them and i don't think we got carded or questioned about anything i used to go to the limelight in new york which is a church and the famous church and mm -hmm. uh now it's like a planet fitness or something believe it or not but everyone was doing drugs <laughs> having sex and if you kind of held your own you could get through the security line i would watch people get carded and i probably looked like i was 10 but i got in and boy did i see a lot of uh yeah of i've been play, i've been playing i was thinking about this today i've been playing in clubs since i was 15 years old i've been getting in playing so like i've been i was 15 when i first started playing shows so i've been getting in and seeing uh seeing this stuff for uh, for a long time you'd think i'd be sick of it by now mm -hmm. kim saw limp biscuit in 99 when she was 14 it's funny as i dated someone 
We liked Limp Bizkit at around that time, maybe a little earlier. I, I obviously mm. didn't get it. Um, but I thought it was funny that DJ Lethal of House of Pain was in Limp Biscuit, And I remember saying, uh, 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 I'll survey ass like John McEnroe. The bitch steps up, smack in a hoe. And uh, was it, now that's not politically correct. But um, I was at, I'm going to sound like Eddie Trunk again, name dropping, but I was at Sebastian Bach's house and Fred Durst shows up. Mm -hmm. And it was very strange. He's a nice guy. Steven's friends with him too. Actually, as stupid as it sounds, I think Fred Durst is recording a, like a rap version of Lay It Down or something weird. But he was in the restaurant business and he was going to open up this uh, vegan chick. I don't know. It was the strangest conversation. Uh, Wednesday, I'm, you feel like this, I'm sure. When you travel and you have any amount of success, you're around these people. Sometimes you go, what's going on in my life? Like there is this person. Here is this person. And I'm yeah. in the middle of this nonsense. It's crazy. Yes, it's a it's a it's a wacky world. Uh, um, okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up in just a minute because uh, everyone's got to get back to their life. We did two hours when I start here. Uh, 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 <laughs> Wait, some people are out of their minds. Uh, Someone says, "Look, I'm gonna cry." Do I look like I'm gonna cry? This is the crying no, face. That's that's your face. Yeah. Uh, you know what was on totally off subject. You know what was on the other day, and I wish it was a better movie because I want to like it. I like the t I have the shirt, and I just it's just never gotten good. The movie Chud. Is oh, not Chud! Great. It's not that it's great. Not, I saw all of those on VHS, but I don't remember it. But in my mind, it sounds great. It's terrible, but the monster looks cool. It's just I don't know. It's just it's a it's a big waiting game for the chuds, and then when they come out, and it's crazy because I use chuds in like everyday language. Like I refer to people sometimes. Like oh, I don't want to go out there. That's where all the chuds are. Mm -hmm. You know. You know. So. I'll tell you Wednesday one thing about your your audience. The super chats are terrible when you're here. <laughs> the, <laughs> the the uh, uh, look. Some of these questions I'm putting it up. Some of these are hard to answer. What's your favorite memories from being on the 2002 Murder Dolls lineup? That's a hard, he, he, the guy did a lot of work. It's hard to answer. Yeah. You got anything off the top I mean, of your head? It was uh, playing in front of Iron Maiden uh, for six weeks and having garbage thrown at you. Like, like it was like a Twilight Zone episode. Uh, that's one of my favorite memories of that. It's my favorite and worst memories because it was like, imagine your, your dream is to play the biggest shows in the world, but the Twilight Zone thing is everybody hates you. And that's kind of what Iron Maiden tour was like. <laughs> that sounds great. That will. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday is educating the youth. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, Chimmy Town has finally watched MacGruber because heard Wednesday mentioned it. Uh, MacGruber's and, excellent. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Gremlins uh, two and Short Circuit two. I forgot about Short Circuit two. I remember Gremlins two. Johnny well, Five, the original Johnny Five, mm -hmm. before John Five. There was Johnny Five. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I want to go, but I just find I get so it. Wednesday, favorite flavor of tea? Uh, not really a tea drinker, but uh, I, I like the throat coat tea that I have on tour when my throat's kind of going out. I've learned to like that tea. Evan would like to know the best place that you recommend for alt gothic clothing. Uh, I don't know anymore. I kind of have all my stuff made or I kind of make it or kind of put it all together. Uh, there's so much stuff. Vampirefreaks.com is, you can find every bit of goth gear you could ever want on that site probably. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It, it's a good, uh, it's a good answer. You have to sort of piece it together uh, as, as Wednesday does and other people. Yeah, and I kind of like, I kind of get custom stuff made like, uh, you know, like my jeans I wear or just some stretch jeans are not like custom or anything, but I kind of, I don't know. I mix my outfits together. I'm like, a, I'm like an action figure. I put little accessories I'm like, Oh, I need this for my boot and I need this and I need a fake knife to hang right here. So I don't know. I've just kind of make my own thing. I don't like to look store-bought. I don't want to look like I just went in the store and That's tried awesome. on the corner model. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wednesday, favorite brand of guitar? 
uh favorite brand of guitar uh well currently i am endorsed by Schechter guitar so yeah, i want to throw you. this this guy right here this That's is nice the most recent hey, this is super cool uh it's it's a hollow body uh mm -hmm. this is my most recent guitar that i that i have uh and uh but i've had endorsements through the esp company uh this company sully uh this is uh, this is my favorite bass which is kind of like your your guy yeah this is the, yeah it's got the p figure i like that yeah this is my favorite bass i love i love this thing sometimes i can actually when i record and write stuff i can I can play guitar for a couple hours and come up with cool stuff, but I can put on bass and play stuff and write stuff instantly in a totally different, uh, different way. But uh, I have yeah, tons of are... all kinds of guitars and stuff, but I, that's my favorite bass. And this is my favorite guitar at, at the moment. So we were talking about, you know, uh, some secret show thing that were may happen. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, let me pick up the bass and play along to some of Wednesday's songs and see what those bass lines are like. And they're very fun. And Wednesday wrote, you wrote all those bass lines, I think, right? Yeah, on the, on the earlier stuff, you know, I mean, it's all kind of simple. I will not doing any any crazy stuff. The first well, album, could, yeah. You could take, the first, you, I could take the bottom three strings off. You're a fan of the East. string. East oh strings. yeah, yeah, you don't even need those other strings. I'm like that bass player in that DAD band. I just need two, two strings. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, I, I, there's a few. I think there's a song was Haunt Me that I like. There's a mm -hmm. um, the, the bass, your your the tone that you get is also part of it. it doesn't matter how co complicated the bass line is. It's if you, uh, um, I'm still trying to figure out if somebody in the chat is who I think they are, but I feel like it's not possible. Um, but um, yeah, the the tone is another thing. Like I don't know if, how to explain it, but like the tone I've always liked. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, maybe it's a Guns N' Roses kind of duff tone that's kind of there a little bit. I, I don't know. It's uh, But I know what you're talking about. That was the main thing on that. That's why that song sounds cool, because the bass tone sounds good on it. Are you able to read messages that I send you privately? This, I've done this for the first time right here. I sent you a message that says, check, and let me know if you can see that. I don't can know where it would show up on your options. It might say private chat to the right. What for me? Yeah, sorry. Uh, Every I don't kid see. At home. No, I don't. I don't see. Wait a second. I just see. No. All right. Well, we're going to figure that out so that we can communicate without. All right. uh, how about an all star waste some time with Jason Green Band? Well, I listen. I think that I would love to do these events that maybe horror conventions and things and. Uh, um, and we're talking about it. I, I, you know, I, I said we should have some kind of name for this. And then I, I, I was brainstorming because I do that. And I thought, what about Thursday 14? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, we'll see. Uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of Haunt Me fans here. Uh, uh, a, great, a great song. And uh, uh, Andrea points out that Hot Bitches Love Haunt Me. Maybe that's why I like they it. Because I'm there. That's, a, that's, that's why my, I have these, almost every record I have like a, Haunt me is what I call like my ballads or my salads, my sad ballads. Uh, I have one almost on every every record, and I've wrote a new one recently. I think I may have wrote Haunt Me Part Two. Uh, nice, it sounds good. Yeah, so I sometimes I do that. I write like a part two to my song, so so I might have wrote Haunt Me Haunt Me one more time. Maybe we'll see. Now there's an acoustic Haunt Me too, right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, the only reason I heard it is I was trying to tag something on Instagram with the song. And it recommended that version, and I thought it was pretty damn good. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's one of the better acoustic version songs I recorded. Some people, uh, some of these questions are ridiculous because their answers are so obvious. Do you like Ultraman? Well, duh. I mean, yeah, who doesn't like Ultraman. Of course, of course, I do. All right. I hope everybody uh, uh, enjoyed this chat. I think we had a good time. Wednesday is working on new music uh thursday 14 and the figure figurines mm -hmm. not bad. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's something to that with a state with a stage set that looks like uh your bed your bedroom with just toys that'd toys be awesome you. yeah uh, yeah uh anyway so 
Uh, look, I think Wednesday will come back and do this again. When he, when we first met, I said, I don't know how much Wednesdays will. I've sacrificed my life to be on camera all the time and through good and bad, but I, I don't want to ask my friends to do it. And when we met, we went to see Donnie V. We had a good time. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about going to see him again at that Rainbow Bash. I don't know if that's a thing you would go to. I think it is not. If you're in town, because I'm going to go to that, uh, that's like next week, isn't it? Or two weeks from now. Very soon. Uh, yeah, let's let's go to that. I want to I want to go to that because Faster Pussycats on it, uh, Power Man Five Thousands on it. So I'm probably going to go see them as well. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely definitely going to go to that. That'd be fun. Well, to see. Yeah. The, the the final guitar player for the Murder Dolls. I think you could say this. I don't know if that's true. Uh, right. Alex Kane will be. Yeah. He will yeah. be there. And he and I was going to go talk to him. Alex told me, he said, hey, do you think you could come on stage and sing the answer parts to Fly High Michelle? <laughs> the, answer, <laughs> the answer part was no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that's not in my uh, wheelhouse. Um, but he's playing with Shark Island. And then he's playing with Donnie V. You know, I wonder if my drummer Mike is playing drums for Shark Island at that show. That'd be funny. I probably is. I think he is. I bet he is. Do you so know what I'll Shark Island claim to fame was? What's that? Do you know Shark Island's claim to fame? Axl Rose stole his moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Axl Rose. I, see, Richard. we could we could win this trivia game one day. Wow, what is that you got going what? on? You do what happened? <laughs> How did you do that? I don't know. I guess I said the. Uh, how? What's causing all this? That was Who did that? Wow! Wednesday has a CGI show. How did I even do that? Who the hell knew? That was great. Wow! Um, earlier, I saw like some question mark floating over your head or something, and I, I was confused what was happening. Um, I don't know. It's just like a like on an iPhone. If you write pew pew to someone, it does a Star Wars effect. Do you know that? I, I didn't know. Star I've seen other things on iPhones, but I so didn't know it's that almost either. like that kind of effect. I don't know. Maybe I said maybe Shark Island is the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Um, all right, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm like Chris Angel. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. True. Very magical. And uh, all right, everybody. I think we had fun. It was different. I like to do. Uh, uh, um, Kendall Lynn has pointed out about 10 times that she's now followed you on Instagram, which is prestigious. Uh, okay. Only 10,000 or 100,000. Well, you got, I think you got 100,000. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's growing. It's 103,000 people on Instagram now. And I have like 160 or something on Facebook, which is, yeah, a wasteland. I well, like Instagram. Instagram is pretty, pretty easy for me. It's fun to use or somewhat. It's it's. I don't hate it. Favorite uh, Tracy Lord's movie? Shock of Dead. Shock yeah, of Dead. My Wednesday's giving you the safe answer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say New Wave Hookers. Uh, uh, She's in New I, Wave Hookers? I didn't know that. I think we may have well, talked she, about that. She was probably deleted out of any version that you had seen. Um, yes, yes. I have great stories about hey, that's, Tracy That could be the name of our, of, our, of our band at the convention, the New Wave Hookers. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> I... Uh, I, uh, I have great stories about Tracy Lords and that industry. And I'm going to talk about it eventually mm -hmm. on a members only thing for adults only. I don't know how we keep the kids out, but uh, you guys shouldn't be hearing stories about uh, Tracy Lords. But I got a personal connection and uh, it's interesting. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, do you remember Tracy Lords had an exercise tape? Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good. And she does a lot of sp spreads. Uh, I remember so the Liana Quigley uh, horror chainsaw workout video thing, too. That's right. That popped in my head. I remember that as well. And Alyssa Milano uh, had one as well. Really? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it's pretty hot. I mean, it's probably I still think the best thing she's ever done was Commando. Uh, she'll never top that for me. Commando, every day, of course. Yeah, yeah. Ginny, Ginny. Her name's Ginny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, com Commando is great. Yeah, anyway, I... I I got to start packing a uh, short trip. So I'm bringing my smaller suitcase. I have different sizes that I pick based on the trip. Uh, this is not a full on tour managing gig. Uh, it's, it's really just me and Steven. And uh, I'm looking forward to spend some time. I'm going to hit the gym in the, uh, in the hotel. 
mm-hmm. staying at a nice hotel. I was going to say the name, but people might show up. And uh, and I'm going to show everybody the Evil Knievel uh, display that it's going to be there. And uh, 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 who's Tracy Lords? Uh, ask your uh, o- older friends. Ask ask your uncle. Ask Gordon Jump or. or uh, uh, and there are, she's not that old. Who? Tracy, the people, it's not that far. Tracy let's, Lawrence. Let's, let's do this FMK for the kids before we. Okay. Leave. All it's right. It's a super easy one. Oh, maybe it's all not. Because right. I've met all of these people and had long conversations with them. It's the, mm-hmm. it Tracy Lords, who was in a movie called Cry Baby for people who probably all I can say. Yes. Linnea yes. Quigley. Who uh, uh, it was most famous for the uh, what, is it, what is it uh, the Living Dead movie? What is it? Yeah, she's trash in Living Dead. She's the naked girl uh, that gets up on the. Uh, she does the dance to Tonight We Make Love Till We Die. That's a famous mm-hmm. song. Slime Ball ba- uh, Babes at the Slime Ball Ballerama, whatever that one was called. Another one of her B movies. Uh, uh, Linnea Quigley, I believe, was also in. Chained Heat with Linda Blair. And uh, she was much younger at the time. And I couldn't even begin to describe. Oh, no, no. Savage Streets, I think it was. I can't even tell. the. Do you remember that movie? Yes, I do. So something happens to a young woman in the school bathroom, uh, I believe. It's mm-hmm. amazing that that guy. That, and then Linda Blair goes out and avenges it. And I believe that that young deaf girl is Linnea Quigley. I believe uh, you're correct. We're having the most taboo conversation without anyone knowing what we're talking about. <laughs> and then the other one is uh, the great Linda Blair Reagan from The Exorcist. Uh, yes. Do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, they're they're all uh, they're all famous in their own ways. But if I had to, uh, you need marry, this one. yeah, let's see, let's the, the um, these are I, scandalous I have... people too. They're all a little scandalous. Linda Blair would have to be for. Are we? Are we? Are we censoring our words here for F? <laughs> you could just uh, say F. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say Linda Blair. We're gonna have to fuck Linda Blair. Yeah. What happened to F? We just said F. And sorry. You said, sorry. Just, terrible at this sorry. Game. Sorry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if, if we're gonna be, uh, if we, if you're gonna be a pig like. like <laughs> yes. Yeah. You just say we're just we're just gonna. I'm gonna if F this gonna, woman. If you're gonna be a pig like Motel Hell. Uh, yes, I would want to uh, uh, TF her. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, TF. We had a great. Hey, that's, that's the name of our band, the 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 TFers. Uh, what about the Linda Blair TFers? That's good too, but it's but she won't let us use that unless we give the money to a dog charity, though. Yeah, or cats. We, <laughs> we give the cats. I once had a long talk with Linda Blair about her cat charity, and I donated to it, and and. Uh, uh, Anyway, okay, so we're both. Yeah, I'm saying Linda Blair for the for the for the effing because she likes to party. She hung out with Rick James, so she's she's a partier. She likes she to get Rick wild. James, bitch. And she was also with Rick Springfield. Um, oh, so two Ricks. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Okay, let's 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 both agree. The reason I would not marry Linda Blair is that Linda Blair is a little bit older. I, I know that's mm-hmm. a, a prejudice, but she's a little bit older. And I think she might be a little nutty. Uh, uh, yeah, I know people, like have told me, uh, people have told me stories that she's not always the most uh, pleasant to, uh, to yeah. deal with. Uh, and you would have to eat vegan uh, as well. She would not. Yeah. Well, she's, not gonna, uh, she's not going to let a, a carnivore TF her. Uh, yeah. her uh, okay. So, But we agree on that one. Now, the kids in the comments must be losing their minds. Uh, I don't know. I don't, want to, I, don't, I don't really want to marry either one of the, I don't want to marry any either. of these people. That's just a lot of work. I just want to, I just want to F and K all of these people. I'm going to have to say, <laughs> Linnea Quigley is about, is, are you having the spiced Coca-Cola over there? What is that? No, no, this is still, but the spiced one is excellent though. I'm just having the cherry, the cherry Coke right now. The, 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 uh, uh, I want to try the spice one. I didn't realize it's just like strawberry or raspberry. It's, or something. it's excellent. It's it looks better than the can itself. I was I was impressed. All right, let's get back to effing and emming and caring. All right, effing and caring. Linnea Quigley is about eighty-seven now. 
And yeah, I would just let's just put her out of her misery. And we're going to marry Tracy Lords, who still looks good. Uh, I've seen her plenty of times. She still looks good. Yeah. And uh, you know that she can suck the chrome off a of Cadillac. And uh, um, yes. I had a nice talk with her. Some of this I'm not allowed to say because some of it is in that Netflix thing that's also confidential right now. But uh, I had a long talk with her about her controversy. She seemed very level-headed about it. I believed what she was saying uh, uh, to me. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, so we're going to F uh, uh, Reagan. Uh, I like I like someone's comment here. This went from MFK to BTK. <laughs> <laughs> I think a little uh, uh, man, the, uh, the Lane, BTK, he, that guy, he's out of control. That guy. He's, he's wacky. Yeah, he's wacky. <laughs> he is. He's wacky. He's got some problems. I bet you some of your fans are going to start out that way. Uh, Lorraine uh, points out, thank you. Lene and Linda are 65. Tracy is 55. Uh, I can't speak for Wednesday, but I am an age bigot. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, I will tell you that Linnea Quigley, it's hard to say. She did a movie that was an adult movie, but she only uh, had relations with herself in this adult movie. It was called Curse of the Lesbian Love Goddess. That's just playing it safe. I don't like I have it, it on DVD. We got to kill, kill her. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we got to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, now we're shilling for Coke. Everyone go out and try it. <laughs> uh, not the kind of coke that those late '80s ladies enjoyed, but the no, the spiced, uh, spiced <laughs> one. Quigley down under. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, this is get some good people in this chats here. It's a yeah, it's an interesting crowd. As we've gone on, it's it's matured a little bit. I think a lot of the it started with a lot of spamming and youngsters uh, saying crazy things, and then. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the Taylor might be a, a, a white supremacist. She only likes her Coke white. I didn't even know white Coke was a thing. Oh, I know what she means. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. We're slow. We're slow around. Yeah. Yeah. We're slow. Remember, remember whenever, whenever in the eight or late eighties, whenever Nestle made the white chocolate and they had the, mm -hmm. they had that really cool song. It was like, it was like, a, it's almost like I a Lionel Richie song. Work. I saw yeah, Faith like, Moore perform it. Oh, they did it. The N E S T L E S. They did that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They did. Mike Patton laid over the stage at the Ritz in New York <laughs> City, and his hair was hanging down, and he sang the N E S T L E S "Sweet Dreams" theme. And wow. uh, the bill that night, I should point this out, is pretty crazy. It was Faith No More first, and maybe Epic wasn't even out yet, or if it was, mm -hmm. it was coming just out next Soundgarden, and uh and sound garden also this wasn't like that bullshit grunge sound garden this was like ultra mega okay maybe loud love that's it right it was no hits you know and i really liked it i really was into sound garden before it kind of took off it was different and then i mean they, they were very sabbathy and stuff like that too but it was cool and then the headliner was voivod can you believe that oh weird yeah, weird. I knew I knew Faith No More opened for Robert Plant around that time too. Wow, that's even stranger. Yeah, yeah Joey Jordison told me the first time he ever saw Faith No More was with Robert Plant and Mike Patton pissed in his shoe and drank it, and he was a fan. And I was like, oh, I think I'll listen to Faith No More now. That's how. That's why I started listening to Faith No More is because he told me that story, and now yeah, I'm a fan that'll, of it. That'll do. Yeah, well, we're fans for different things, but they. Uh, 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 I then went to see the same venue, the Ritz in New York City, which used to be Studio 54. I was going to see Faith No More open for Circus of Power. But uh -huh. in the time they announced the show, Epic came out, Get Set, What Is It? And it became the biggest song, and Circus of Power had to go on first. They actually had to switch uh, uh, the billing. Interesting. Uh, uh, Faith No More or the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Who's your favorite? Uh, F, M, or K? <laughs> BTK. <laughs> that's, that's the new game we'll play. Do you have a favorite of those two? Uh, Faith No More, uh, hands down. They're that's a band I I didn't get into it when the, during their 
epic and all that but like later on i really got into them i think their album of the year album might have been album of the year when it came out for me yeah i uh i would say faith no more as well i've got issues with the chili peppers uh, uh especially anything anything in the last 25 30 years it's just not for me occasionally I hear something and go, oh that's all right they come off very pretentious and yeah, I, it's it's weird. I remember getting a Red Hot Chili Peppers cassette when I was like in seventh grade. I was a tape trading somebody. I think I traded like Peter Chris's solo album and got it. We both got screwed on that. Uh, and I remember just looking, I'm like, this band, what a dumb band name. They're never going to make it. And then they made it. And uh, I don't know. I don't, they're not even in the same league. People say like, I don't even, that's, yeah, they're not even in the same league as Faith No More. Two totally different things. I just think that people may know that Mike Patton had a, or the Mr. Bungle, Red Hot Chili Peppers argument war thing they had. I like uh, I like the Mother's Milk record, and that's about it. Uh, and there's some, Like I said, there's some Chili Pepper songs that I think are okay uh, here and there, but uh, definitely a band I would consider overrated. I've never gone out of my way to see them. I mean, I've met, I've met them. You definitely, you definitely, they definitely have their own sound. I mean, when you hear Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know it's them. Yes, I, I would say that for better or for worse. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, we were about to leave, and then all of a sudden, uh, people had these BTK choices, and who would I be? The BTK broiler. I think that was a, a serial killer <laughs> Burger King sandwich. You know, uh, <laughs> that would be amazing. Can I get the BTK boiler, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, well done. Um, yes. The the uh, the other no no condiments. The other thing uh, that I think we'll talk about is I follow this group on Facebook that shares old ads for like fast food and stuff, and it talks about mm -hmm. some of the things that most people won't remember, like the Mulan chicken nuggets that came in a holiday orange uh, dipping sauce, and of oh, course wow. many incarnations of the McRib. The time the McDonald's tried to sell pizza. The time that McDonald's sold burritos. Uh, but I think it'll be fun, and I think we'll do that on a future show. We'll show these things and see what we remember and also what mm -hmm. uh, uh, other people uh, remember. Some people don't want us to leave, but it's two hours and 26 minutes, and Wednesday has a life, and I have a life. It's funny how the crowd changed Wednesday. I feel like a lot of them had to go to bed because it's a school night. You know what I mean? Like, Is it a, is it a school night? I don't know. I, Wednesday, I haven't been in school in a long time. Yeah, man, I, I, I hated dance. school. I hated school so much. Man, I hate, feel so bad. If it's a school night for you, I feel bad for you guys. It's the worst. I would just oh. say drop out. Um, um, Michelle is Ooh. like, Michelle's about a month away from, you know, graduating law school. And I, and she goes, I got this busy day. I go, I would drop out. <laughs> even I though hated she, school. Even though she's got a $200,000 education. I'm like, I would just quit now. I dropped out of college. In the middle of a test, I was like the kid in the Skid Row video. I just waved and I walked out and they go, where are you going? I go, I'm done. I went to see Dragon, the Bruce Lee story in a movie theater and rethought my college experience. I hated it. Uh, if Stanley and Life, Sex and Death taught us anything, it's the schools for fools. Uh, yeah. I, be cruel to your school. And be cruel to your yeah. school. Yeah, I, anyway, just, I, hated, I hated school so much. I, it was awful. It was did you graduate? No, but I went to the very last day of 12th grade. Uh, so in my mind, I completed the course. Now, they didn't give me the proper paperwork when I left. But to this day, my mom's not here anymore, but she always said this. She's like, you went to the very last day, so you graduated in, in my mind. And I went, well, you're the only one I'm trying to impress with this graduation thing anyway. It don't... Mm -hmm. I, yeah, this is, it doesn't apply in my in my world for a job. Like, oh, you're in a band. Can I see your diploma? Yeah, I was just gonna, I was going to say the same thing. Never once did my diploma mean anything. Even my college education was bullshit. The school I went to goes, listen, we're going to say that you graduated in January instead of uh, June, like everybody else. Uh, but we're going to let you graduate. You're going to walk the aisle and do all that shit and sing songs. I actually spoke. I was like, a, I spoke even though I was the worst CA average student. And uh, when I when I went to college, I didn't want to go to college. It was the dumbest thing I ever heard. And then they said, um, you, could, uh, uh, you could do this scam where I graduate later. 
and they told colleges I graduated first in my class. I was the only person in the class. And so I got a scholarship to Hunter College in Manhattan. I was terrible. I hated every second of it. And uh, I was the worst student. And I knew it would amount to nothing. And I told them that. And then I got the option to go work with MTV. And I got to go with Troma. And I got to be in uh, showbiz. And I realized never once did that diploma mean a damn thing for nothing. Nothing yeah. at all. I just school for me like back in like seventh, eighth, ninth grade is just like it is in these movies that we watch. All the kids were mean. They were all like, you know, it wasn't like what we hear on the news and kids and dealing with guns and stuff. It was just your it's like three o'clock high was a real movie. That was a real situation. You know, that was what school was like for me. That's why I, I hate it. I still just I still have dreams that I'm in school sometimes. And I'm just trying to get get oh, out, man. get out and survive it. It's like prison, prison for kids. I don't like to talk about politics Wednesday, as you know, uh, yeah. although the crowd seems pretty safe. But one of the problems is giving a, a students, giving them a break on their educations. Um, you want to have more intelligent people in the world who go to school to be doctors and lawyers, uh, uh, teachers. Jesus, teachers should get paid more. Otherwise, you're going to have a bunch of people like me and Wednesday talking about Gordon Jump on different strokes. And I'm not yeah. going. So I'm very I'm supportive of our military because I'm not going. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Uh, I know I'm old now, but I, I still wasn't going to do it. So I support the people. We should take care of those people. But the same with school. Let's give a break to some kids who we want to be smart. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you make the pay all this money. You can have a lot of dummies in the world. And uh, we don't want that many dummies. So let's uh, let's make school should be affordable for those who want to go so that Wednesday and I can watch other people uh, uh, do something with their <laughs> lives. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad I'm not in school. That's all I can say. I, I, I still have to deal with it with my with my granddaughter and stuff. And, and I had to right. deal with it with my daughter going through it. So I still kind of have to go through and live that. Uh, but but Did I your daughter it. graduate. Uh, did she grab? No, she didn't graduate either. She's yeah, following her right. father's footsteps. She's trying to be a loser like me. Did you ever uh, go to parent teacher meetings? No, but I did get in a lot of trouble. Uh, I mean, not in a lot of, I mean, just your basic kind of stuff. Like, you know, back in the day, the parents would just call home and you would, you know, I'd get grounded or, or whatever, but, uh, you know, I didn't do anything too bad. I was just your typical leave it to beaver type kind of, Oh, you know, Wednesday ended up in this, in this giant tea teacup on top of the school today. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll get even out of there. You know, he was Wednesday when he was in school also. No, I meant your daughter. Did you have to go to your daughter's school and meet teachers now that, you, you know? Yeah, I did when she was, when she was younger, uh, which is around the time of murder dolls and stuff were taking her to school. And I had dreadlocks down to my waist and uh, being in, you know, it's still the little small town where I'm, where I'm from. So it was uh, definitely all eyes were on us looking, looking like weirdos. Uh, but that's definitely changed now. Now when I, you know, I picked up my granddaughter from school around Thanksgiving last year and mm -hmm. just seeing the difference in parents and, you know, you know, people have tattoos now. Back when she was in school, I, I looked like this going to pick her up from school. And people thought I was insane. I had friends who would say like, oh, it's my kid's birthday. Uh, do you want to come over to Chuck E. Cheese or whatever? And mm -hmm. I'd go, oh, whatever, you know, but I don't have kids. So I look like a, a perv, you know, hanging out at Chuck E. Cheese. with. But all the kids' moms are hot. They, they're, they're all, uh, so, the soccer mom is now moms with tattoos. They look like Murder Dolls fans. They, uh, it's a whole new era. It's much, uh, it's much cooler. Uh, I'm going to try to wrap this up. Uh, um, I'm just seeing if there's anything important like uh, FMK middle-aged women or se I should say seniors. <laughs> um, this am I evil guy? He 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 knows some of the some of the lingo. He knows Mike Damone. If you know who Mike Damone is, I certainly know. I bought tickets uh, from Mike Damone. Hey hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we put, put me down for Blue Oyster Cult next week. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the girl will have the uh, clam sauce. Uh, 
uh, a lot of questions have been about, do you think Wednesday will come here? Wednesday will come there. Wednesday is going to come everywhere. <laughs> Excuse I'm my coming language. everywhere. I love Excuse when people ask me, like, I get the messages online from people in other countries and they go, when are you coming in France? Mm -hmm. I'm like, again, I'll be there this year. I'll be coming this year. He, he's he, he he he's uh he's like Peter North. He just can't stop. So you can see him. He he, he has an you know, agent. Speaking of speaking of Peter North, I'm uh -huh. pretty sure Peter North was good friends with Joey Jordison. Well, how interesting! That's the strangest thing I ever heard. Because I'm pretty sure we were leaving a Golden Gods one day, and Peter North grabbed Joey and was like, "Hey!" And they were like, "Oh, hey!" Blah blah blah. And I was like. Is that who I think it is? Like, yeah, that's the guy that can shoot like ten feet. Joey, you, Joe, and 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 uh, and fill one of these cups. It was balls. Yes, uh, and I believe he was hanging cup. out with. Um, um, there was another guy used to hang out with Joey, uh, Craven Moorhead. Mm -hmm, sure, he was hanging uh, out with that guy. That's how I remember this. Joey, so. probably, we'll we'll save it for another time. He, I, it was probably a million people that he knew because he was particularly famous. And then you would see uh, around. Uh, but did you ever sit and think about where the name Peter North came up for? Or maybe for you, which is a no brainer. I never thought about it. I never thought of it. Peter. Yeah. Peter. North. I, I, I mean, I, I was an adult before I figured it out. And I've, I've met him and talked to him several times. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a, a, a Peter is a, another okay. term for a wiener. Right. And then it faces North because it's always, uh, you get it? I get it. Someone else explained it to wow, me. Wow, that's like a, that's almost biblical. Mm -hmm. No one knew in the Bible. Peter. We just uh, very I believe, biblical. I believe his name is in the Bible, Peter. <laughs> of course, yeah. Well, he yeah. was. He's, he's, named, <laughs> he's named after that. Uh, Wednesday. I want to let you go, but you you set me up for so many good stories. I can't stop. Ah. I'll, tell, I'll tell one more. They were doing a convention, the Hollywood Collector Show that we're going to go to. It's getting better every day. J.J. Mm -hmm. Walker's there now. It's, it's <gasps> out of control. No way. Mm -hmm. Dynamite, I might I don't have like. to say. There we go. So they did a reunion of Jesus Christ Superstar. Jesus was there, Ted Neely, and mm -hmm. Mary was there, Yvonne Elliman, who sang the song, If I Can't Have You. Uh, mm -hmm. Disco hit. It was in Saturday Night Fever. So I know a guy named Paul Thomas. Paul Thomas was a, an adult filmmaker uh, and an actor at one point for Vivid. And I said, hey, and I believe he played Peter. I'm almost positive he was Peter. Was Peter the one who was uh, dumb in the Bible or like denied? Uh, he was kind of dumb, sure. right? I don't know. I'm not a Bible guy. I'd... If anyone, yeah, I didn't think so. If anyone here knows Peter's thing in the Bible, I think it was him. Anyway, yeah. Paul Thomas, I said, let's have him at the convention. And they go, well, you know, he's got an adult background. I go, who cares? He doesn't have to do, he's, he's here to sign Jesus pictures. So uh, I asked them, and it turns out that he used, he was banging the, 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 uh, the disciples. <laughs> and huh. uh, uh, he, 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 he banged, he raw dogged Devon Element, Mary, Mary, he raw dogged Mary Magdalene in, really? in, 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 in Israel. <laughs> This is what? true. So she said she didn't want him appearing. And Ted Neely, Jesus, carries himself in a very Jesus fashion. Mm -hmm. And so I did a signing with him. And I had him signing the memorabilia. And I go, I think I got to ask him to write a character name. So I go, I know this sounds weird, but could you write like your character name, which is Jesus Christ? And right. he goes, oh, well, how about I just write... Uh, drummer from you know north carolina or wherever he's from somewhere this right side. and i go well it doesn't have the same ring so he goes how about i write jc from nazareth and i go why not i knew at christmas these <laughs> were going to be hot sellers you know what i mean I, I was right like, right so i i would do in the signing and people come over to him and they treat him as if he's really jesus uh, uh he changed people's lives and i guess he's the closest they're going to meet in their eyes but they they pray with him and they have rosaries and, and hugs and so me and my friend rachel we after the end of the signing he goes uh he looks at her and he looks at me and he goes may i and we were looking at each other like i don't know what's happening he puts his arms out for a big jesus like uh, embrace and then we're he's hugging us and we're looking behind his head at each other like 
Like, what the hell is happening? No, no, I shouldn't say hell. Uh, right. But it was a, it was an incredible experience, and I went from Peter North to Paul Thomas and Jesus all in the same sentence. Uh, uh, let's see if we could do this BTK real fast, super fast. Amberlynn, oh. Gingerlynn, Christy Canyon. I could do this one in five seconds. I'm going to go on an effing spree with the, all three of them. <laughs> I don't want to kill any of them. Oh, can't say it. Gosh, I can't. Please. Sorry. I'm just going to have to go on an effing rampage with those girls, and that's it. Don't want to marry mm-hmm. them. Don't want to put them away. Let's just let's just keep it friendly. I personally know all of them. Um, <laughs> their numbers are in my phone. I'm going to marry Christy Canyon. She looks great. She was my first. Really? Thing. Yeah, uh, I, I, she was my first, uh, and you never forget your first. She looks amazing for her age. I'm going to then take Ginger Lynn uh, because of fame. Uh, uh, Ginger Lynn was a legend, an icon. She's a, a nice woman. I directed a movie. I don't think I could tell these stories with James Dean. <laughs> Not the James Dean from Rebel Without a Cause. And uh, mm-hmm. he did a Anyway, you'll have to wait for the members only. But uh, uh, so, and then I'm going to have to say goodbye to Amber Lynn, who who can be cranky at times. Do you have any input on this? I, I'm just going to I'm just gonna have to go effing on all of them. Um, Ginger Lynn would be. Uh, well, I probably have to marry her. She was my she was my favorite uh, back in the day. Um, Amber Lynn would be my my the last one. I would. Uh, but yeah, so you're with me. I think ma- mainly I would just go on the effing spree with all of them. I don't I don't want to do the other other stuff. Yeah. That's too much work. All right. Hold on. My screen just uh, uh, became, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to explain. Um, every now and then I hit the wrong button. I don't get a fireworks show like you. But, you know what? Uh, someone someone posted right here. They said the dude from Creed liked to pose like Jesus too. You know what I heard? I heard that the dude from Creed, uh, after the shows back in the day, they would have someone would go out and pick a couple ladies for him. And as soon as he walked off stage, they would play these arenas or well, these sports arenas, and they would have like the the big shower, you know, for the all the, you know, the the group showers and they would have a, he would have a chair set in his shower. And as soon as he was done off stage, he would have three ladies bathe him. They were anointing him. I believe. That's what I heard. And so that was just back in the, in the day when they were, you know, they were still, I guess they're doing a reunion now. This is when they were still playing, playing uh, arenas. And I heard that was a daily thing that that guy did. So, um, uh, I always had some, I was like, man, that guy's not as bad as people make out to be. That's pretty cool. That's, I mean, sounds like a pretty cool cool. day for me, you know? I knew a a famous pop singer from the 90s who was also an actor and a game show host. And uh, apparently he would pay women to, uh, uh, the the golden uh, shower was his thing. And he's very famous, a very clean cut uh, uh, guy. a guy, I obviously wouldn't say his name because it's alleged, Mark McGrath. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, uh, it's alleged. Uh, anyway, right. no one's watching this. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah. listen, I can't remember the Rocky Horror Broads well enough. If Wednesday wanted to take a stab at it, he could. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, not, doesn't matter. Although Ron Jeremy told me that he had relations with one of them. <laughs> really. Mm-hmm. I can't remember which one. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, it has been great. We're almost on three hours. I, I When I woke up uh, just three hours ago, I had no idea that we would have such an entertaining chat. There's the cat you waited for all cat, night. My uh, cat, is. she's woke up from the nap. She has risen. For all yes. the uh, for all those who wanted to see Scream, uh, 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 there you go. Um, yes. it, uh, listen, go to officialwednesday13.com. Check out his tour dates. He's got the coolest merch. I'm going to order one of these uh, zipper hoodies. Uh, I, I like to wear zipper hoodies when I tour uh, because I'm mm. fat. I don't like to, uh, I like to cover up a little bit. Uh, everyone happy to see the cat. All the, everyone just woke up. The, the cat is the star of the show. Here yes. we are telling big jokes all night, and all anybody cares about is the cat. Anyway, I, I appreciate you guys watching. We'll do it again. It was fun. Wednesday, you'll come back. 
we'll we'll have more uh, uh, fun and all kinds of uh, 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 shenanigans and hijinks and all those things. I'm going to ask you a question when we we'll get off the air, uh, so that the kids don't hear it, and we'll go from there. Uh, and for me, uh, you can like this video, uh, uh, comment, subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you all, you all in Utah uh, tomorrow. All right, thank you guys, and have a all right. Say goodbye, scream. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. There you go. He's a ventriloquist. And yeah. <laughs>